Okay, there we go. Stream should be coming up live any second now. So, and uh, yeah, so let's go over this. Uh, where we left off. So we left off kind of at the the end of you guys uh, surviving the the game of death on um, in the halls of the living on Eox. Uh, you guys managed to to get out of there successfully fought your way through uh just really annihilated it had lots of fun uh the ratings were great uh you loaded everything onto your ship and you are able to take off you had a couple of uh extra passengers uh so you had uh, let me pull up my notes here you had uh clint and where is my notes on the the gray here? Stephen Gray. Yeah, Stephen dun, Gray. Dun, dun. <laughs> so we have Stephen Gray and Clint. Um, so you guys are able to go ahead and start taking off. Um, Hopefully the ship starts. Yeah. Um and. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's just going to be a couple of hours of, you know, uh, flying over to the, the landing zone that you guys need to get to. So the landing zone is, uh, it's called the, the lifeline. And, uh, you, you guys have a couple of hours to, to get over there and, uh, you know, make your repairs and everything else. So. Luckily, uh, you know, with the 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 help of uh, Stephen, if you guys wish, uh, it shouldn't even be all that hard at all because he's uh, a quite capable engineer as well. So you know, with with all the engineering prowess you guys have on the ship, no real worries on getting everything there. Um, we do have your bets. Let's see if I can pull that one up. All right, so uh, when you guys land at the landing zone, we can go ahead and cover your bets. So uh, we can see, you know, who walked away with what. Um, and then we can go ahead and uh, see if there's any uh, bonus coming in from Zoe all at the same time. So uh, I, I'm not going to make you guys roll for. For doing the repairs, I think that there's just plenty of time that you guys can get the repairs done uh, in a couple of hours with multiple engineers on board on a small ship. Uh, it was just a matter of getting the parts. Uh, so you guys can go ahead and, and work through that. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a, a matter of during that time, if there's anybody who's not an engineer, was there something specific you wanted to do? Uh, we've got a couple hours of flying time. So if you wanted to uh, repair gear, um, Modify some armor, things like that. But we've got plenty of time to get all that stuff settled up. But Dr. Gray is just assisting the engineers. Okay. I'll cheer everybody on. <laughs> cheer them on. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know everybody some... helps. Yeah, go ahead. Everybody helps, even even if if it's just holding stuff. Yeah, it's it's definitely a team effort. Uh but uh you know, you guys you guys have some time. So I I know that there was some armor picked up and stuff. I don't know if anyone was actually uh interested in using it. So if if there is, then you've got time to modify your your equipment as well. What about possible medical treatment too? Yeah, I'm sure Dr. Gray could could uh try to patch you up. Was was somebody wounded at the end of the last fight? I think a couple of us had some wounds, but yeah, I'm wounded. Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, so, three of us are down. All right. So I will uh, open up the party sheet here. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. yeah, Dr. I'm healing. Yeah, yeah. Looks looks like Gustav is the only one, and yours isn't actually. 
you're a 11 out of 16 hit points but your stamina pool is fine so yeah you've you've got an actual wound on you um i'm not sure if there's going to be enough time to do actual medical treatment but uh once well, you get once you get started you do have a couple you do have a couple days uh flight out through the uh uh, uh doing the actual relay race where you know you should hopefully have some time to recover there You were going to say, Dr. Gray? Dr. Gray would use um, his, basically use a resolve and, and use his healing channel to uh, give basically 2d8 hit points back to everybody. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's great. And that, that would include Clint. Yep. As long as we're in a, in a group where I can see everybody. Yep. Yep. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Spend that resolve and take care of everybody. Uh, just go ahead and roll it. Nice. Yeah, so everyone recovers seven. So um, let's see here. So that, yep, that puts everybody up to full. Uh, including yourself. Because you had, you had one off too. Okay, so yeah, everyone's back up to full. That's great. Nice. That, that's uh, extremely useful. Okay, so yeah, Doctor Gray is able to uh, to emit out the the healing energy, and uh, you know, basically restore everybody's health on the ship while you guys are working. You all go through uh, and are able to to kind of put all the pieces together, you know, swap one thing out, plug another thing in, you making sure you're doing it at the right spot where you're not going to just like fall out of uh, orbit or anything like that. And in the process, you're able to replace uh, all those parts. Uh, you do have a, a cargo bay that's full of extra uh, not great parts that uh, you'll have to return back to Epsilon Station. But for the meantime, your ship is now fully functioning. So congratulations. And if there's nothing else you guys want to do, we can go ahead and uh, touch down on uh, the lifeline. So as you guys land, uh, you are, uh, you know, coming in, up, coming in close, and then you get a transmission. And the transmission is coming in from Zoe, and he says uh, that uh, he's uh, exceedingly happy uh, with the the ratings that you guys did an amazing job, and that it's one of his highest rated episodes in months. And for that, he goes ahead and delivers a uh, transfer to your uh, ship account of 2000 credits so you guys have 2000 credits and we'll just go ahead and distribute that right now nice so there you go that is 333 credits to everybody and you only got a couple credits left over so so there you go uh so there's nice, that. nice so as you guys uh land there's uh so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to meet a handler there, or a handler there is supposed to meet you. Uh, so when you get off the ship, uh, you notice a Blaka uh, standing there just like eyeballing your ship. Uh, and a Blaka, if you guys remember, let me see if I can, I can pull that up. So I just have the picture here. Um... Avlaka uh, is the uh, the giant uh, wolf-looking people. So I'm pulling up an image to share. Avaka. V L A. V L A K A. Avlaka. So so instead of being a cow in Spanish, it's an idiot in Greek. There you go. <laughs> So there's your, your Vlaka, 
so yeah, you've you've got a Vlaka standing there, not not with a weapon drawn, but uh, that's that's. I shoot him. Like. <laughs> so uh, he's standing there, kind of kind of eyeballing you, and uh, he as you guys you know open up the the, the gangplank and and start your way down, uh, the the Vlaka uh, just looks up at you and says, "The lead foot." Yeah, I've got a I've got a package for you to to, to pick up. From who? Well, you're doing the relay, right? Yeah. Well, I've got your goods. Uh, my guys can load it onto your ship. Just uh, let me know when you're ready for them. Uh, we're ready, aren't we? I think so. Okay. Uh, he he like looks over, and uh, you he kind of like makes a a nod. And you see uh, a couple of guys just start grabbing one of those levitating pallets, and uh, they start taking it up the the gangplank. And you know, one of you guys can direct them to you know which cargo hold you want them to to set it in, or they can just push it inside for you. Either way. Uh, he... uh, no, I want to watch him if nobody else is going to. There you go. Okay. So uh, he he looks over at you guys and says, "So." Uh, uh you guys know the you guys know the captain very well yeah we were his crew for some good amount of time yeah i heard about what happened to him that's uh it's a rough break so uh you guys look like you're running a little bit light i know you're racing but would you be interested in making some some side cred Always interested in a little extra money. Well, uh, let's just say this. I've got a delivery that needs to be made over to Verses. It's the type of thing that, uh, you know, if the local authorities and the Verses found out about it, they might not be all that happy. But uh, if you could keep it on the, the down low, you know, we could uh, load a little bit of that in your ship. And I can have somebody pick it up. Uh, when you, when you get there, I understand you're going to, uh, the River of Returning Joys, no, no big deal. I can have somebody meet you there and pick up the package from you. If you do that, uh, there's a smooth thousand credits in it for you. Hmm. It, it, it is wow. the, the no questions asked type package, you know, I'll, I'll have my boys <laughs> loaded in there. It'll be a box, nondescript, just, uh, you can't let anybody open it. Can I use my ability to kind of get his motive, on a sense motive on him of some sort with my yeah. yeah. Lashunta ability? Sure. Roll your roll your sense motive. And let me um, let me open this up. Make sure you've got your. Do we have everything still active for you? Yeah. Can I do like Lashunta magic above that sense motive? Like, how is that? Uh, for Lashunta, you, you can like start to um, concentrate on him. And with time, you can, you know, you can kind of get a, a sense for, you know, who's around. And then eventually you can kind of like start probing into his mind and see if you can, what you can detect from that. Yeah. Uh, you, you can just roll your sense motive too for everything that you said so far. Yeah. 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 And we'll, we'll take care of bets too. You guys are just starting to walk off the ship. So you're going to have to go over to a, uh, uh, a gambling console. To get your bets. Dr. Gray is standing next to the captain. Okay. So, you guys... Go now ahead. that I rolled a 20. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys go ahead and uh, get a sense. Uh, he's... He, he doesn't seem like he's, uh, you know, trying to give you anything dangerous. Mostly just something illegal. As to how illegal, uh, you're you're not entirely sure, uh, but you know if he says it, you know he'll load it onto your ship. Don't open it and don't let anyone inspect it. Chances are it's probably the type of thing that, uh, you know you don't want to get caught with, but it's it just depends on if it's worth it to you guys. He, uh, he kind of looks at you because he sees you guys just staring him down, and he says it's uh, it's not going to be heavy. It's not going to weigh you down. It's it's a 
pretty small box. Dr. Gray will telepathically uh, remind the captain that that's an easy one twelfth of our debt to the uh, pack of rats, plague rats. All right. I'll take a quick glance at everybody. I'll see if anybody like has a like real objection. As uh, long as you can get him to tell us it's not a bomb, I'm okay with it. Just, well, just yeah, I mean, just it's, don't it's no questions asked, right? Well, <laughs> I, I want yeah. one question. <laughs> well, it might not be a bomb, but it could still be a plague, or I mean, well, so it's, it's 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 not anything that's going to hurt us. Yeah, I, I don't care. I, I I don't care if it's something that'll cause a problem later. I just don't want it to be a side cross while we're in in the race. Flight. Well, yeah, you, you guys, you guys do have Stephen Gray on there, who is a a plague dispensing Gray who wants to experiment on people. So, eh. <laughs> well, I I do have an airlock for him to work on while we're in flight. So, well, there you go. <laughs> or be jettisoned out of. I'm good. I'm down for that. All right. Okay. All right. So, if I can get any negative emotions from him or anything that makes me think he's actually trying to hurt us, I think I'm I'm down with it. I think we all are. Okay. Yeah. He says, "Well, okay." Uh, so by the this way, one question. Yep. This he's having somebody pick it up at an already scheduled stop in the race. No, he's he's going to just load it onto your. He's going to have the guys who just loaded the other stuff on your ship load another box onto your ship. He just says the rules are leave it alone. Yeah, but nope. nope. It, that's that's not what it I asked. Goes, it's going to it's, it's going to Varsis, which yeah, is the final stop. Yeah, the final stop on the race. So you guys will have to have it all the way through till where you're supposed to land. Now Versys is a you know a, a large civilized planet uh and there's gonna be you know more law enforcement, more stuff there. So what he's basically trying to do is get you guys who are doing this to try to smuggle it onto Versys for him. So, okay. okay, I think we're I think we're done with that. Okay, so yeah, that's why yeah. we have the hidden compartments under the decking, right? <laughs> yeah, that that uh, smuggler's hold is not installed on our ship. Yep, you guys have no smuggler's hold. So, what Which didn't, you can didn't get, we have that we, in the parts manifest? We just picked up all those parts. We didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did not have a smuggler's hold. You got a big. You're basically a legit cargo ship right now. You've got two cargo. What the holds. hell? What? I signed on to the wrong crew. <laughs> hey, no, no worries. No worries, mate. We got we got enough engineers on board to uh, make that create a part of the ship. There you go. Yeah, you can you can try to to um, cleverly hide it. So essentially, it's it's about a a two foot cube. Uh, just and it's just a nondescript two foot cube, a, a solid gray box, uh, and it has a little uh, a little keypad on top to open it up. Um, it's the type of thing that if you wanted to, you could probably hack into it. Uh, but if you hacked into it, it, this type of secure container would have some sort of a log. Uh, so I mean, if you guys really really wanted to get into it, you could try to hack into it. You could try to to wipe the records and stuff, but there's always a chance that you know something will be able to tell that uh, that you've opened it. So basically, it's it's more or less protected from shielding. It's kind of like um, uh, like scanning, you mean? Yeah, it, yeah, it's uh, pro protected from scanning. It's it's like a um, it, it's it, it's basically like a a cargo container for uh, items that you you want to keep very private. Uh, it's a little little security box. So about two foot cube, uh, and they load it up on there. Uh, it doesn't seem to be overly heavy, like maybe 50 pounds. So you're not sure what's on it, but uh, yeah, thousand credits uh, to deliver it to Versys. Cool. A side note, we were gonna do the uh, bets when we got paid by, uh, what's his name? Yep, you guys haven't, those. You, you have to get over, uh, so the, the bets, what the way that they work is there's there's these terminals that you can go to, uh, you know, think of them kind of like a, a like a lottery kiosk that you'd have at a gas station. There's just these terminals you can go to, and that way they can make sure that people aren't, um, you know, necessarily uh, placing fake bets or anything. So they're just official gambling terminals. So when you guys get off of here, there's a little kiosk over you can run to and grab your winnings. 
So gotcha. Yep. Okay, so we're uh, set with that. He he nods uh, nods to you guys. Says, by the way, I'm I'm Garu. Uh, I used to uh, I used to roll with the captain back in the day, and uh, you know if this turns out good, we can maybe do a little bit more business in the future. Thank you for your time. All right. And uh, I'll I'll uh, have my I'll have my guy looking for you when you when you land at Versys after the uh, the celebration's gone down. All right. After we win. After you win, exactly. And he says, "Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, by the way, Denegan's an asshole. Uh, kick his ass for me." Will do. All right. So. Yeah, he they've loaded the thing up onto your ship. Uh, like, like I said, nondescript. It's just kind of sitting in a corner right now, so you guys can try to figure out what you want to do with that. Uh, and let's go ahead and take care of your gambling winnings. So, and new bets. All right, uh, Doctor Gray, you had eighty at a three to one for everyone to live. Now I'm regretting that I didn't have odds on everyone to walk out and take two people with us. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can add 240 credits, or do I have to give that to you? I, I got it. You got, got it? it? Okay. So, yeah, you get 240 credits. Okay. Then next, Cal at three to one. Uh, the same thing, all all live. So uh, you had 40 credits on there, so you're at 120. Uh, let's see. Gellum, you had at two and a half to one. What was your two and a half to one? I have it written down at a two and a half to one. <laughs> it says me me living was what I bet on. You You living. Well, you did survive. At a two and a half to one. <laughs> so, um, uh, so you I think, get, oddly enough, I bet 251. <laughs> yep, yep. You, so you have, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and, uh, we're going to round it down because it's the, the gamblers and they're not going to round up in your favor. 627. Okay. So you, you get 627 credits. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Ghost, you had 300 at two and a one, two to one that, uh, I believe you survived specifically, but I'm trying to remember here. I, I have it. I had, um, uh, I had a 300 on, ah, oh, gosh. Yeah, it's three. You had three hundred at two to one, which I know the two to one wasn't the 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 really high odds. So, uh, so that's that's six hundred credits right there. Yeah, everyone. That, was, yeah. Yeah, and then you had two hundred on everyone, uh, walking out at three to one. Right. Uh, everyone survives, uh, and that's uh, another two hundred credits uh, uh, at three to one. So that's six hundred. So you get twelve hundred credits there. Nice. Uh. Gustav, you had 50 credits bet at 3 to 1 uh, that everyone survives. So you're walking out with 150 credits. And Tybin had a 5 to 1 that everyone walks. Uh, so if I remember correctly, everyone walks was like, was that everyone walked out or no one dropped? I think it was explained that everyone walks out. Yeah, and you guys all walked out, no, no issues. So, um, yeah, nobody had to be carried, kind yep. of thing. Yep. So that's that's seventy five credits for you. And that is everyone picking up their their gambling winnings. So you guys have made a a nice, pretty penny on that part. Uh, so you guys have uh. 
there's an actual start of the race when you guys are allowed to take off. Uh, so you have a couple of hours until that point. Uh, we'll, we'll say you probably get about four hours on uh, planet here. So again, right now you guys are at the, uh, the lifeline on EX. Is there anything that you want to do while you're on there? Uh, you know, any, any questions you want to ask, anyone you want to talk to, anything that you want to have go on, or do you want to just kind of get forward over to the start of the race? Um, I have a couple questions. Okay. Uh, are we going to build a tier two ship or did you build it for us? Um, I did not build the tier two ship, but if you guys like, uh, one simple thing that we can do is we can upgrade your ship while you're here. I mean, we've got a lot of engineers and you're at a, a ship station. So we could go ahead and, you know, maybe if you wanted to uh, turn one of your cargo holds into a smuggler's compartment, now would be a good time to, to get that done. You've got a couple hours to get it done. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. All right. Let, yeah, let's get it done. So let's see here. Let's go over to ships. All right. So what we have, I used up every single point available when building this. Uh, so you had 55 ship points uh, and you're going to go up to 75. So that's 20. I believe I used every single power point too. So one thing that you might want to do is increase your power core. So let's take a look at that right now. Yeah, I don't see anything in PC ships tab either. Uh, let me go PC ships. Um, there we go. You guys, I think you should see it now. Yep. Yeah, the lead puts there. Okay. So yeah, you have a pulse gray power core, which is a hundred. Uh, power units and you're using a hundred of it and you have 55 build points you're using 55 of them so if you want to add pretty much anything on here uh, you're going to need to start by upgrading your power core um, let's see you have a pulse gray which is a hundred that's a nice name but yeah <laughs> and I, uh, i'm dr gray dr gray is not happy with the sensor uh array that he's been given okay so uh to give you an idea so at essentially they they come in increments of every 10 build points gets or every one build point gets you about 10 power core so if you wanted to go up to a pulse green you know 150 it's, it'd be five build points uh and you can get that swapped out for a pulse green uh, that'd give you an extra 50 power to deal with uh, it's probably a good amount for a lot of stuff that you'd want to do uh, but you could go as far as, you know, a, a pulse blue for, you know, half of your upcoming build points. Uh, that'd get you up to 200. Um, uh, pulse red, one, 175 would get you for 17. So that's, you know, probably the best bang for the buck wise. But as far as, you know, just getting a couple of upgrades added, uh, I'd say probably upgraded to a pulse green. Uh, that is the, the, you know, the five build points for the extra 50 power should handle a lot of, uh, extra stuff you'd want to do. Well, there's no point in having a lot of extra power that's just going unused. Right. Uh, I well, mean, we should... Uh, I, was I was just thinking, like, the important things. If we want to smuggle this hold, um, we have budget medium range sensors, which is quite a bit of range. But there's no but bonus. There's no bonus it, about, but... Yeah. I mean, we could do better than budget, I would hope. Yeah, the only the only thing on that stuff is there's a lot of stuff that's going to go up. I mean, you we can we can always figure that in last. Just remember to reserve maybe like three to five build points for upgrading power because uh, you are probably going to need a need a power for whatever you do. Uh, so the smugglers cargo hold is was that something you guys really were interested in? Uh, I am. I guess most of us were. Okay, smugglers are smuggling. All right, so uh, it requires four power and two build points. So uh, right there, you're you're. And then it's uh, it's like a a build point 
increases the DC. Um, is it? I it just says here. Well, let's see. A smuggler's compartment can contain ten tons of goods, with no item being larger than medium. Uh, the creature on the starship must succeed at a DC twenty perception check to detect a basic smuggler compartment on the ship. Uh, the creature scanning the starship must succeed at a DC twenty computers check to detect one. This is an additional check is part of the science officer scan action. Uh, for each build point spent over the base cost, the DC increases by five to a maximum of DC fifty. Though the amount of apartment, uh, the amount of power the compartment uses also increases. So yeah, I mean, technically, if you if you wanted to, I mean, you guys could really crank up the build points on it, uh, do, um, and, and do a DC. Well, we could at least add a couple. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at, at that point, uh, I mean, if if you added four four build points onto it, turned it into six build points there, um, I mean, you're gonna make it a DC forty. Uh, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, it's gonna make it hard for somebody to find. <laughs> uh, so uh, if we add, okay, uh, we have we have ten build points available, right? Twenty. Twenty. Yep. Well, okay. Advanced medium range sensors are eight build points. And so are 60 shields. Yeah. It's so the the things I would say to to remember is that we can always reconfigure the ship too. So that's not a big deal. The things that I would kind of optimize for uh, at you know, at this point, because you're not necessarily concerned about general, you're concerned about uh, essentially uh, a, you know, avoiding uh, uh, avoiding combat or you know, getting getting out of combat if you are attacked because you're trying to deliver uh, something. You're ba it's basically a race, so you're not. You could be in in a fight, but also at the same time, you could also maybe try to avoid a fight, and it's probably faster. Um, so anything that would help you escape from a fight or, uh, of avoid fights are good. Anything that's going to help you, uh, you know, move quickly is really good. Uh, all of that stuff is, is possible there. So, um, as you know, it, there's also, you guys only have one weapon right now. So that's another possibility. You might want to consider throwing on a second weapon because at this point you've got one long range, but not very powerful weapon. Uh, you've got no heavy weapons on there, uh, and I believe you have a forward arc that'll support heavy weapons too. So that's something to consider there as well. If you if you did get into a fight, right now you're not configured for fighting; you're configured for running. I think running is a good thing. Well, and for that, then uh, you know, certainly making sure that we've we've got decent thrust, or well. Is the thruster our movement so we can move ten? Yeah, we have good thrusters. Ten thrusters. Yep. You have the you have the fastest thrusters that uh still offer the plus one piloting bonus. So I would say um let's see here. So let's see. I mean, if you weren't too concerned about power, you could replace the pulse and go with an arc as heavy. That's going to give you 30 power. Um, that's only going to be three build points. Then uh, two build points for your smuggler bay, plus whatever you want to put into it. So that's at least five. And then how how difficult you want to make it. I mean, if you guys said, well, you know, let's go all out. Um, I mean, you could, for, for eight build points, you could essentially max that thing out, uh, and that would be 10 power, eight build points. That'd still leave you, uh, uh, even if you got that, that'd still leave you nine build points left at, with a completely maxed out smuggler compartment and a, um, a, an upgraded power supply. 
uh, or like I said, you could you could drop that down a couple if you you wanted to go only to like a DC forty and not max it out. But and you know instead of having nine, you could have ten or eleven. So that's that's just probably what you're dealing with is most likely like a ten or eleven or some somewhere between nine and eleven build points. So if you guys figure out what you'd want to have in there for nine to eleven build points, um, let's see stuff that's not upgraded. So one thing that's good to add just in general, you guys have a basic computer. Um, yeah. So your com your computer gives you no bonuses. The nice thing about a computer is you can apply a bonus anywhere with it. So, uh, you know, a Mark I computer gives you a plus one bonus, and then you can give that to any number of people. Uh, a Mark II is going to give you uh, a plus two bonus. Um, you know, a, a Mark II duo node is eight build points, and that would end up giving you a plus two to two different roles. So two people can get a plus two. Yeah, I mean, if we're if we're not going to fight, then I guess we're not going to worry about weapons. I mean, it seems like the consensus is that we would just want to run away. Mm -hmm. But oh. so shields, thrusters, and a computer or armor. So another thing to remember too is that your cargo hold is free, uh, and it holds a lot of cargo. But your um, your smuggler's compartment still holds a decent amount of cargo, way more than what you need to make this run. And that's why they limit the run to to one ton. They they don't make it a ton of cargo. So you do have two cargo holds. You could put on your tech workshop. Uh, you guys have no tech workshop for doing actual, you know, refit, repair, building equipment, things like that. Um, or a medical um... bay. A medical bay is another one. But and we have guest guest quarters, uh, which we really don't think I'm gonna use. Well, right now your guest quarters are being used by the two people on your ship. Oh, that's right. Um, so okay, let's let's jettison it with both of them. <laughs> Thanks for helping us get out of there. We're not gonna take you off the planet like we promised. Boom. <laughs> we we fulfilled all that. We took them off the planet. <laughs> you, you, took them in, you took them into orbit and then brought them right back down to the planet. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and to be fair, they didn't help us get out of there. They just nah, didn't impede us. I'm just, I'm just kidding with you. Yeah, I didn't want to make Starship. I didn't want to make this into let's build the Starship now kind of thing. Yeah. I just, yeah. If... Okay, well, um... Right, so, uh... <sighs> I, I mean, if you guys just upgraded your power plant, uh, did a, a max smuggler's compartment, and threw on a tech workshop, uh, you'd have a couple points left over for upgrading uh, a computer or something else with your extra build points. Uh, and, you know, you could basically just say, okay, let's let's see what sort of one or two Zs we can get there to, to upgrade it, and that should be pretty... Okay, that, that, that should be, be good. I think yeah. that's that's a pretty reasonable to just kind of move us forward on this. So, and then we can sit that's down. Not... Um, we can sit down. Maybe not at the end of this game, uh, but we, you know, at at the the next, uh, maybe at the next. Uh, well, at the game, once we get complete and you guys are done with the race, then we can sit down and have a a nice big session where we, you know, kind of go over and and rebuild the ship. So let me get rid of those two cargo holds. All right. So I'm going to toss on a smuggler's compartment. So let me go to um, the ship items here. Okay, smuggler's compartment. And then we're going to say, what, do you guys want to max out that DC or do you want to go with a 40 or do you want to just... Um, Can it be upgraded later? Well, I mean, if you decide, hey, we need one or two more build points, we can always we can always tweak that out. Uh, I'd say uh, for the moment, I uh, I would suggest uh, putting up five build points into that, which which would uh, put the DC at thirty five, which is high enough for um, like a casual scan or you know even a, a more thorough, but not really exceptional like super scan. It'd be a forty five. Well, it. Yeah, the the build points are uh, let's uh, see. twenty. Twenty it's is five the base. per and five per is build base. points. Yeah, yeah. five. If five, if you put it at five points, it's going to be a thirty-five. Now re remember that too. You guys are going to Versys, which is high a uh, high security system. So 
Um, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where if you end up taking illegal stuff to a high security system and you get scanned, they're gonna probably have pretty good scanners, and you guys are you guys are aware of that. So, but I'll I'll leave it up to you to decide what you you just tell me what you want your DC you to said be. It could be anything up eight, to fifty. Eight, eight build points is fifty. Um, let's see. It was yes, eight build points for fifty. We might as well make sure that we're successful, and that's I mean, probably uh, the best way to do it. Essentially, at eight build points, I don't even think I'm going to roll for it because I don't think that uh, at that point it's it's going to have to be like teams of people taking time on your ship to find it. When smuggling is probably going to be the fastest way to pay off our debt. And if we don't have to dump our cargo in space to avoid getting caught, then that would and, be a good thing. And, and well, you don't want to deal with get... Jabba? No. <laughs> Solo well, must have not invested his points right. <laughs> All right. All right. And, and a, All tech, right, yeah. a, a tech workshop was also a very cheap build point add-on, too. So chances are you guys are going to have some left here. So that's Well, that'll fun. be a fun place to play in the tech workshop when we want to build stuff and upgrade our armors and whatever yeah yep so we're gonna set this here so i have it as a dc 50 i'm gonna set the um so that's six extra points so it's a build point cost of eight and uh that's a pcu cost of 10 okay so let me get those i've got to go in and set those manually eight. here and then we were upgrading to a an arc power core. Was that right? To get 130 power. Uh, sounds about right. Probably, yeah. Uh, if you want, we can just upgrade that at at the end, just to make sure. You know, we we want to at least make sure we get enough to cover what we need here. We can upgrade to the minimum that we need. So, um, let me gotta delete these things here. So, all right, that looks pretty good. So we got the tech workshop. We got the smugglers compartment at maxed out. Um, let me see. Um, smugglers compartment, we added six onto there. So that's eight. You're at tier two, so you're at 64. So you've got 11 left without your power. Mm -hmm. And we um, need extra 10 power just to cover the base. And we don't have, we haven't upgraded the shields yet. Or the computer. Yeah, your, your computer. shields, the, the way that the ship is set out, the shields were pretty high. The thrusters yeah. were pretty high. Uh, but a lot of the other stuff was set low. You're set out for hauling cargo, carrying some VIP passengers, and that's about it right now. Uh, you're not set up for, for doing a ton more. Um, okay. So What was the, the duo computer? Was that eight build points? I believe it was, and that was going to give that's... you guys plus two to any two rolls. So you could use it for weapons, you could use it for piloting, you could use it for anything. Still, still kind of, uh, kind of expensive. Um, honestly, on build points on level, on level two. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could always uh, half that down by getting a plus two to any one thing. Um, or we could go, we could go with a Mark One Tetra Node and and get plus one to any four things. Yeah, that's. Doesn't I, the good mo mo uh, maneuvering already give us a plus one to piloting? Yeah, yeah, but, but you, you could, there's still gunnery, scanning, engineering checks. The, the thing I would say is, too, remember that, like, you've got... Okay, so the things that you'd want to do are probably piloting, engineering, and gunnery. Um, scanning, you're going to you're gonna want to do, but occasionally... I, I don't think you're going to be scanning every single round. Uh, maybe they would be doing stuff like more like uh, balancing shields and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many times you're going to get to that plus four. Uh, so, but you could, you could always do that. It's, it's only four build points for four plus ones. And then that's, 
you know. Well, there's a trinode single computer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's three three gold points. points for that. He um, was just me... making the point that instead of one person getting two, we could get three people with one. Yep. Well, it was that was for eight build points. It was two people getting the plus two. So if you wanted to to say, okay, well, we really need to do engineering and and fighting off, or we really need to do engineering and piloting or gunning and piloting, uh, you know, you could give two people a plus two bonus. But that's up to you guys. You guys let me know. I'm just fixing up your power supply right now. I'm gonna just upgrade it to the one that's 130. I don't think we're gonna go over that. So um, I'll try that one right now. Well, we're sitting at 11 points, so if we did something for 8 and then, you know, something for 3 or some things to add up to 3. Well, 3 three is uh, your power core. So, okay, so there's the 3. So, then, so you, you, you've so got about, eight yeah, you've got about 8 left to deal with. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, adding uh, adding a, tri a, a, a Mark 1 trinode would put us t down to 5. And we still have built points for uh for one uh one or two weapons. So let me. Oh wait, that would that would also wait. We have one hundred and ten consumption power power consumption, which means we could still afford something that takes up to twenty. So. Yeah, you guys have eight. You guys have eight left. Now that we've got the tech workshop on there, power on there, everything else. So, um, you can do. Uh, let's see, so we've got sc scanners. You actually have upgraded, uh, but they're just medium range, so that you're able to do longer range. Uh, because there's basically the way the scanners work is they're only out to a certain a certain distance. Uh, and because your weapons are set up uh, for long range weapons right now, uh, you're you're basically set up to you know take pot shots at people as you're you know out maneuvering them rather than go face to face with them. Uh, so medium range, I figured, was probably better on that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Your thrusters are already pretty good. I mean, if you if you really wanted to toss it in there, there's. Uh, uh, there's, you know, shields. Uh, you could always maybe try to upgrade your shields. Um... Well, I mean, AC is if they can even hit us. Shields are if they can. I mean, you could go, you could technically go up to medium shields 90. Uh, that would be 15 power and all of your build points. Uh, that also would quadruple how fast your shields recharge too i like that idea uh and that would be that's 15 power so that would put you up at 125 out of 130 that would max you out and you'd basically be set up with high shields high speed uh and high smuggling which is pretty damn good setup for uh, a smuggling race I say shields. I'm good with it. Shields. Okay. So let's do that. Um, so let me flip back over here. Medium shields. And we still have we still have five uh five power left and uh how many build points or did we invest everything in two shields now? Uh, that would be everything in shields. So okay, fair enough. Let me toss that on there. There we go. And then I have to actually go into the power and delete the shield forty and make sure my build points. I only have one shields ninety. That's good. Okay. So yeah, you're you have five power to spare. Uh, you've got maxed out DC fifty smugglers compartment. You've got a recreation suite with the gym, so basically just a place for you guys to to kind of cool off. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to get rid of the rec suite, you could replace that with another component. Uh, that actually did have 
a build point cost. You don't. You have five power, and that had a build point cost of one. Um, you're maxed out on build points, but if you wanted something else that um, that maybe used up some power and was still in that one build point range, we could swap that out. But if you what's guys, what's the benefit ready, of the? What's the benefit of that rec suite? Um. So, uh, it helps crew or passengers relax and blow off steam. Uh, so. That's what guns are for. <laughs> uh, it could be a gym, a sparring arena, exercise area, um, other comfortable space for people to uh, do holographic amusement video games. It's it's basically all RP. Uh, it's you know if you wanted a place like if you're going to have passengers and like I said you're set up to actually have VIP passengers. Um, that that's basically a rec area for the VIP passengers. Yeah, uh, we are we are missing a tech workshop. You do have it under expansion base. It's oh, we do. Uh, yep. Synthesis Bay. We so, can we can do Synthesis Bay. We can do. We're we're maxed out on lab. base, I think. No, well, you could replace the uh, you could replace the oh the gym. The gym, yeah. It's essentially it's a rec area for your VIP passengers. If you aren't planning on doing VIP passengers, you could do that. Um, but like I said, it it was set up so that you could do two things: you could haul VIPs or you could haul cargo. Yeah. So, um, if you want, if, VIPs, unless somebody has something that actually is useful to put in there. Uh, I'm just looking for stuff that's not above. You, there's okay. So there's escape pods. There's an arcane laboratory. Uh, you could have. Uh, Science lab, sealed environment chamber, synthesis bay, and tech workshop. Yeah, we already have a tech workshop. Yeah. So those are all the uh, options, essentially. If you wanted a science lab or a uh, sealed environment chamber, synthesis bay. Um, I can see if I can find here. Um, so a science lab uh, provides a, a plus one circumstance bonus to life sciences and physical science checks. Uh, and a plus two circumstance bonus to life sciences checks. Uh, let's see, hold on. Oh, if you, it, you, there's also a physical science lab or a uh, life sciences lab that you could get specific that give a plus two bonus. So you could get a general one that's a plus one to either. Um, and it's that's basically for research. So a science lab, if you wanted to research stuff, uh, that's a possibility. A sealed environment chamber is basically a place where you can house aliens you can basically create a, a, a sealed environment and put something in there that's great if you needed to transfer something alive from from one place to another uh, and you might not want it roaming around your ship um, and then a synthesis bay uh, is allows you to craft drugs medicine poisons well i don't know if i want stephen gray doing research uh when we're busy <laughs> Oh, there's there was also the arcane laboratory too. I forgot about that. Uh, that would, we don't have a technomancer though. Yep. Yeah, so that that really wouldn't do you any good. So yeah, uh, unless you're into escape pods, uh, we guess we can leave that as a a gym for right now. Well, we can use it next time we level up, right? And just oh, yeah. use the build yeah. point for something else. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or you know, you guys can always swap out other stuff too that just requires build points and not necessarily more power. But I think that leaves us at a, a pretty good scenario for, for going forward. Agreed. Okay. So, uh-oh, it looks like someone tried to roll a script or something, or roll a, make a roll. That's weird. I just got a, an error on my side, so. Oh, sorry. I was trying to see if the um the gun turret thing from the crew worked. No. Um, yeah, I, I don't think any of the Starship combat stuff works right now. But, yeah. side note, they just hired two, uh, two developers that. at Smiteworks. Yeah, well, one of them's going to be doing Starship combat. Sweet! Sweet. Oh, that's so needed. <laughs> so, especially today. Whoops. <laughs> so, all right. Cool. All right, you guys have uh, basically in the amount of time that you're there while you're getting ready, uh, you, you swap out some other systems, do some repairs, uh, beef up your shields. Uh, you decide to take that uh, 
that cargo that needs to be smuggled and load it into a smuggler's compartment uh, and, you know, outfit your, your ship with those couple of hours. Uh, and now, as, you know, you're making your last adjustments, uh, you see the official coming up to you and uh, telling you that the, the race is about to begin and he wants you all to ready your ship. And as he says that, you can see uh, Denegan in his ship uh, getting in over on the other side. So, uh, let's see. Can I shoot him? Can we, can we taunt him? Uh, you can definitely taunt him. <laughs> Give him the biggest middle finger. <laughs> I'll try to make him cross. <laughs> can make him cross. Awesome. That way he makes a mistake. You know. <laughs> that that is exactly how that works. <laughs> yeah, go for is, it. Is the, is the token for our ship legitimately the Millennium Falcon? Yes. <laughs> hey, man, I don't have a lot of tokens, and that is one that I do have. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Um, so you guys go. Where's your. Uh, well, diplomacy is not for taunting, George. <laughs> it, intimidate would, would be better. Intimidate. There you go. So yeah, uh, you you throw an intimidation his way, and uh, he looks at it and he just just shakes his head at you guys and uh, just starts getting on a ship. But you, you you seem to notice just a slight little skip in his step, and he gets onto a ship probably a little bit faster than he was moving before. So. Might not have, might not have uh, completely, uh, you know, out. Uh, you might not have completely freaked him out, but you, you might have sent a message that you guys are ready for him. Nice. Okay. So, with that, uh, you guys, uh, go ahead and jump on the ship. Uh, one thing that you notice that's just a little bit odd. Uh, the cargo that you have is very cold. The the cargo that you're supposed to be transporting is very cold. Like it's uh, ice actually, cream. It's the standard ice. one or the smuggling one? The the no the standard cargo the cargo that you're doing for the race is actually cold. Like if when you walk past it, getting you know getting onto the ship and and going through the uh, the new smuggling compartment, uh, you realize that that cargo hold actually that the cargo you have is so cold that the air around it is actually cold. The, the cargo hold itself is probably about 10 degrees cooler than the rest of the ship. Huh. I'd like, I'd like to scan it. Liquid uh, liquid nitrogen? It is not liquid nitrogen. It, it, is, it is... Frozen it is body being, parts. It is something being kept on cold storage, though. Uh, I, Dr. Gray, go ahead and... Um, uh, let's see. What we, was it? Yeah, go ahead and roll. Give me a computer's check for running a scanner on it. And I have a uh, chemilizer, if that's useful in this. Uh, it's it's sealed up, so you would have to actually open it, and uh, it, you could just scan it with a, a regular scanner using a computer's check. Um, I will. It, it's it's not actually all that difficult to to figure out what it is. Uh, you are, uh, not. You're transporting eggs. You're transporting like living, the eggs of some living creature, uh, encapsulated in a cold storage. How about and, uh, you a have life sciences to determine what it is? You can do that. You've got uh, about a ton of eggs on there. What kind of eggs? Uh, Akata. I would say. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll give that one to you. Um, you guys are transporting, uh, let me show you here. You guys yeah, are transporting glass serpent eggs. I have a feeling we'd better lock that <laughs> cargo to, hatch down just in case. To yeah. the diaspora where they are highly illegal. 
Cool. Oh, maybe they should go in the uh, smuggling smugglers <laughs> compartment. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as as you guys are looking at that, you're just like, oh wow, yeah, and uh, it's like, so to anyone that doesn't know glass serpents, uh, glass serpents are essentially a um, a gigantic semi-transparent predator that just loves to you know roam around nearly invisible and consume people so the the picture there shows it um you know very uh you know kind of standing out against a plain white background but if it was in its natural environment it would be uh almost it almost kind of looks like the predator from you know the the predator movies where it you can see through it so much that you only really get a vague sense of its its shape as it's wandering around and eating things and uh they have a huge problem with them in the diaspora uh, because they have a a giant water planet where essentially people have been letting these things loose in the water planet and they just wander around inside of this giant icy sphere filled with water it's 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 kind of like a giant ice um a water filled uh ice ball and yeah they, they I mean, kinda, let's they wander around inside and just eat people <laughs> so they're let's let's lose some some translucent serpents uh on a the planet that is also mostly translucent what can go wrong yep yep but uh it happens to be such a great environment for them that uh they have become like a really uh problematic invasive species and nobody knows why uh, people are releasing them in there. But, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe you guys will find out. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you guys... Let's, let's move that. You guys go ahead and move them over to the smuggler's cargo hold. And so right now it looks like you're just transporting a bunch of ship parts. Uh, so and, and two passengers. And, and a couple of passengers, yeah. So you've got VIP passengers uh, and a bunch of ship parts right now. And the rest of it is all hidden. So, there we go. All right, so... All right, so we need to... One question. Do we need to ask our passengers if they have any uh, history in the area we're going so that even if we can get the cargo through, they're going to be like, oh, you got Stephen Gray. We're blowing up your ship. Oh, can we do a computer's check to see if they're wanted? Yeah, that's pretty easy to do. So, um, you... Uh, you can go ahead and look up information on them. Go ahead and make your computers check. Very nice. Uh, you're not able to find any, uh, you know, any particular warrants. Uh, the, the diaspora is not going to, I mean, essentially the diaspora is mostly pirates. <laughs> so you're not going to have a, yeah, I was more worried about verses. Yeah. yeah you're not, you're not going to have a, you're not going to have a big issue there. Uh, the mostly the thing that you'd want to look for is actually a, a too good of a reputation for going to the diaspora. You kind of want to be, um, <laughs> you know, you, you don't want to be too, too clean going there. Uh, the other one is, um, uh, going like to... we made Nick well, that's right. we got to update, update the, um, you know, Basically, whatever the modern Facebook is about how good of a, you know, how, how well he's doing supporting the uh, efforts of the authorities to, you know, catch smuggling. <laughs> there you go. Pirates. Yeah. Yeah. Help, help catch pirates. So, um, so yeah, you guys can put a couple posts out on social media uh, about how, you know, his, his assistant's been invaluable. Make sure that they're, they're nice and fresh. Uh, and you got plenty of time. Oh, to do you should have got. You should got a picture of him when he glared at you and said that's the look he gives to smugglers or whatever. <laughs> yeah, just start start taking taking pictures of him and uh, can we maybe fake his picture uh, shaking hands with uh, with uh, some government authorities on on uh, I don't know overseas or somewhere. Yeah, that'd be great. Um. I don't think you have a lot of good pictures of them. If you thought to take pictures earlier, you could definitely nah. doctor those. But uh, nah. any, any picture that you'd be getting is just a picture that's available someplace else. So it'd be kind of easy yeah. to track that out. Not not to say you couldn't fool someone. You could always doctor up some photos if you needed to, you know, pull them out on a data pad and show somebody. Uh, you could you could definitely take your time and and get some of those going. 
Uh, we don't have the time. We we yeah, we only have four yeah. hours, and we, we just kind yeah, of no. spend them. Well, yeah, you guys you guys are getting you guys are getting ready to leave right now. So uh, this is all kind of like while you're while you're prepping up and ready for takeoff. Uh, so yeah, jump jumping back um, jumping back onto that. So uh, you guys are are you know you've you've got everything settled. Uh, they they told you guys to to ready and essentially what you do is you, you get a message going through on your intercom and they say, we're going to give a countdown uh, when you're going to go, uh, you know, counting down from 10. And when we say lift off, you're going to, you know, your engines are powered up. That's when you're able to actually take off and start the race. Uh, and just to be clear, you need to deliver the cargo to the diaspora uh, and then when you deliver the cargo to the diaspora, all, all of the, the information sent there, they will give you the next leg on your relay. Uh, so, you know, good luck. And with that, we'll begin. And then they start the countdown. So you guys got your, your 10 seconds. You ready for it? Can I divert power to the engines? Sure can. Roll it. Oh! A natural one. <laughs> Engines go silent. Shields go it's up. It's still a ten. <laughs> it's still. It's still. Yeah, a 10. but it should be. Yeah. It's. It's not uh, a success. It's not. A, not a success. Yeah, you're. You're going through. <laughs> just so. <laughs> the one time we needed the roll. <laughs> yeah, you. You go through and and you start uh, diverting power to the to the engines and. Uh, uh, realize as you're doing that that in in the process of hooking some of these other things up, uh, hooking up the new shields, uh, you and, and inadvertently kind of uh, cross connected something, and you have to really quickly rush to divert uh, you know divert the the power the other way just to avoid you know accidentally uh, letting out a giant EMP in the area from overcharging your shields too much. So yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, you didn't get any extra boost onto the the engines, but you've got a pretty fast ship. Um, Denegan's ship, though, is actually faster than yours. He's set up with a uh, a smaller because it is only one ton of cargo. He's basically set up with a very small uh, high speed transport. So it's it's really going to come down to a, a real a real race here. So uh, with that. Let's go ahead and uh, we have our countdown. So they go, so they start at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lift off. And with that, let's get a, go ahead and get our piloting check. Okay. <gasps> and I will roll a piloting and check. Then, is there only one pilot or can I give assistance? Um, I guess you can, you can go ahead and roll assistance. Sure. Why not? Okay. Uh, That's not bad. Is it? What's the DC for assisting? Is it? Uh, is it just a ten DC to assist, or is it a twenty DC I to think, assist? I think it is. Uh, uh, well, that's a good question. I can I could try to look that up. Okay, uh, it's a DC DC ten check, and you get a plus two uh, bonus to to the main action. So there you go. And if you're rolling a skill check as assist, if you hold shift, it actually says you're assisting. Oh, I did not know that. that Let me try now. That's awesome. Ew. That is cool. I did not know that. I'm gonna I am a wealth of useless information. Apparently. Oh. Swear it. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I did. So everyone, <laughs> everyone yeah, oh, then, is Lexi driving. <laughs> and then, and then, no, and then Lexi's we not a, driving. <laughs> there, there, there's a plus one for piloting, right, from the ship? Yep. And you get a plus one uh, miscellaneous bonus to pilot from the ship. So every everyone's trying to help you pilot here. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, like this. I already screwed it up. So go. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've got you've got a right now. You're sitting at a plus five bonus to your piloting check. So holy crap, that's plus, good. Uh, plus one to the ship. Uh, 
two from Gustav, and two from the captain, who has the... Our other... AC is also one higher, by the way. Our Sorry. AC's... Oh, okay. Let me, uh, let me pull up the ship. Because of the piling uh, ranks. Oh, okay. Uh... So, depending on how we do this, can we get a scan for what armaments they have on that ship? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys can do that as as you're pulling off. So let's just go ahead and get the the piloting check to pull off. Is everyone done with their assist so that uh, Ghost One can go ahead and roll his piloting check? Yeah, I, I was just showing. <laughs> I'm not helping. Okay. All right. So that's a plus five to piloting, and let's roll. Um. No, it, it says pilot one, armor one. It should should it be a higher bonus uh, uh, than one to the piloting on the AEC? Nice, solid roll. Um, I'll look it up again. 31. Well, I will tell nice. you this. He has a fast ship, but you guys have a hell of a pilot because you just go blasting out. Like, people are flying back as he just does the hardest launch that has probably ever been done <laughs> from uh, from this station. Just just goes blasting out of there. Yeah, great, great job. Oh, yeah. Thank you all. So, um, yeah, I, I'm... So, uh, there's a question about our, our AC. Uh, I had... Yeah, don't worry about it. Go ahead and I'll look it up. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I already see on the ship it says that we have a plus one from piloting. So I don't know if I'm supposed to do if we add some bonus from the actual pilot or or what. But uh, I had it say the same as the plus one from piloting on the uh, maneuverability for the the engines. Yeah, it it does say that. Yeah. Okay. So yep. Uh, so Dr. Gray, go ahead and roll your uh, computer's check to scan his ship. Okay. Nineteen. Good. Um, let me see here. Okay. And. So. Let's pull up our. Uh, science officer phase. Okay. Uh, so your DC was twelve. And so for every crew, five. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, ship you... size, speed, maneuverability, ACTL, total and current hull points, and shield points, as well as core PCU value. I think is what I. One and two. Yep. For. So that that sounds pretty good to me. So I'm trying to find his ship here. Further scans would get weapons and then load and then any other after. You guys all know what the starship actions are? I can do some quick reading. Yeah, oh, okay, they... so they start off on um, so starship combat starts off on three sixteen, um, and then your actual actions start off on three twenty two. And so what you'd want to do is you just want to essentially get familiar with the section that is going to be what you do. So you know if you're going to play an engineer, uh, it's three twenty three. If you're a gunner, three twenty four, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, captain captain starts off on that first page three twenty two. So, um, I am pulling up his just, ship here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just post the just post the AC uh, the AC formula into uh, into chat. Okay. Let's see here, ten plus armor plus size plus pilot ranks in the pilot skill. 
And that's the pilot's rank. Uh, oh. Which, uh, yep. So at he should point, be a two now. Two. So, yeah. So, yep, we get a plus one. So you can say that's two. Okay. And I believe our size is zero because we're a medium. Yes. So. Um, plus the one from the um, thrusters. Yeah, well, that's the... Oh, yeah, you guys leveled up. I forgot. So you've got two ranks in piloting now. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. That's where we're at. Okay. There, there we go. go. That's better. Yeah, I just had the plus one from Thrusters. I didn't have the actual pilot skill in there. So good. So I have a question. Yep. For demand, it says once per combat. Are we considering this whole race one combat? Like, how is that? No, the whole race isn't one combat. It would be essentially every time you guys meet up with each other. Uh, it's a combat. So, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to, uh, if, if you wanted to make some sort of a, a, uh, like an intimidation or, or something like that, then, then you can do it. It is not supposed to be a combat race. So you're, you're not supposed to fight each other. Uh, but that doesn't mean that people, but... <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't mean that people don't, um, get away with fighting each other it's just essentially it's considered to be bad form you're not supposed to directly attack them okay i was just looking reading the demand thing it says i can demand to perform or crew have more performance and yeah. i can use an intimidation but you can always do per one, per one combat i was just decided, yeah. trying to decide how frequently i can do that so uh i i think of that as uh you know if if you're thinking like a star trek episode where he's like you know you know, hey, Scotty, you got to give this to us or we're going to die. You know, something like that. That's that's kind of like the demand. You know, you're, you're basically putting that there's uh, it's life or death if, if you, you got to do this or not. And then you just roll your check. And then if you get it, then they get a plus four bonus. But you can only give somebody a plus yeah. four bonus once. Uh, but you should yeah. be able once to give... Once per combat. Yeah. Which I, that's what I was trying to decide. Where does that divide? If we're not... If the whole race isn't one singular combat, no, then you, how often it, can it do it, it it is essentially a scene, so okay. Um, okay. so I if you. you if you're if you're not in combat, it's kind of hard to pull off. It's life or death. Um, you know, you can you can definitely you know as you guys are competing with each other, it's it's a competition. So I could say you know as you guys are doing your takeoff and as you're you're kind of like right there racing each other, uh, you know you can make that check, um, and. Go ahead and, and figure figure that out, but okay. um, you know, essentially, it's going to be that that one scene. Once you get to the point where okay, you're he's no longer in sight, then that's going to reset, and then it's the next time you actually have someone actively you know in your face competing with you. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. For competition, not combat yeah. necessarily. Enough. Yeah, yeah. So. It's I, I, I'm just using it as co competition because I think that's where um, it makes the most sense here. So yeah, that's fair. All right, so we've got that. All right. So, yeah, you guys go ahead and take off. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've been flopping around. So uh, the information I was going to give you, I'm still looking up the guy's ship here. So give me one second here. Um, all right. So I'm while I'm pulling up the, the information on his ship, and I'll, I'll probably, what I'll do is, because I don't necessarily, well, I, I could probably share it with you on, on Fantasy Grounds. Um, so go ahead and, uh, <laughs> is there something uh, that you guys want to do while you're essentially exiting orbit? while you're while you're launching out of orbit uh you guys are essentially racing this part uh you have a significant lead you are scanning his ship to get you know some of the the basic information so you're you're getting all the information on you know the the hull and the power and all that stuff that you can grab is there anything else that you guys are trying to do while you're on your way off the planet does the captain hmm. does the captain want to pull him up on the intercom or the like yeah, I, I can give some more taunting <laughs> for the intercom. Yeah, go ahead and uh, and tell me what you're gonna say, and then when you tell me what you're gonna say, we'll we'll roll it up. 
How are you gonna how are you gonna taunt Denegan? I'm not allowed to use bluff as well. So okay. Yeah. Um what what do we want to say? Do we want to let on that we we're we're giving all this false information about him? <laughs> no. No. Nope. God no. Okay. Uh, no, not come. necessarily us, but but they will have friends in the pirate community, basically. We 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 aren't ready to give up that golden goose yet. Well, I'm not sure. Um, just, just the, uh, I don't know. Mm, yeah, just that we're, we're we're coming for him. We're 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 gunning for him. Do, do you know? Uh, do you know what really hurts? Getting your ass kicked by a lead foot. <laughs> Or you could just go back to the fact that his brother didn't love him because he was worthless. Oh, damn! Using his way dead below brother. the belt. Yeah, that's exactly a lead <laughs> foot to the genitals. Yeah, I don't think he liked his brother. So, well, I mean, if he wants to get anything out of his dead brother, he has to prove he has some kind of worth. Okay, so yeah, so I figure the way this is going to work is like you're just going to tell us, okay, you can make a new round of checks now, kind of thing. Yep. To so, do whatever, and so here's here's what I'm gonna I'm gonna toss you. I'm gonna see if so. I've got it in the book now. I got to see if I can find it in Fantasy Grounds. The ship stuff's well, not, not if it. If it was something that takes a little time, I mean, it's 11.35, you could take your our break a little bit early and you could set up. Yeah, I can, I'm can. i just seeing if I can find you guys a picture of his ship, so uh, it, sh it should not take me long. I'm just trying to, I was trying to find the name of his ship, so now it's just a matter of... I bet since he's so macho, it would be something like Big Balls. So, um... Lead food to the big balls. Mm. <laughs> there you go. They don't actually have a picture of the ship to share. That's sad. Okay. Well, I can. I can just tell you. Okay. So, essentially, what it is is it's a, a Sheeran design light freighter, uh, but his seems to be heavily outfitted for uh, for speed. So if you're looking at it, if you want to see a picture, uh, it's on page 313. It's the Star Hive Drone Mark III. Um, and so that's essentially he's flying a, a Sheeran uh, drone transport. But they're, um, they're basically used for freight and uh, colonial defense. So it's, it's not a... It's basically kind of an equivalent of your ship. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit... Um, more maneuverable uh than than your ship but he's got one that is really really tricked out so like that is the nice. you, you see you see that uh he's actually got a higher power core on his than you have on yours and uh it it almost seems like he probably is, is uh, is faster, you know, uh, as far as like raw speed, he's faster than your ship, but he doesn't seem to be pushing it all that high on the, the raw speed. He's, he's not even operating his, his engines at a hundred percent right now. So, and, uh, I what, can, what, what would his raw speed be? Uh, what, what would the maximum his is where is his engines here? Well, at least twelve, I'd guess. Yeah. He's he's got a, a size twelve uh, engines on it. All right, that's not too bad. No. And how many shield points? in in each quadrant uh his he's got a 40 so he's got essentially oh, wow. what you were running before okay so not that okay so 
All right, so yeah, I'll I'll see if I can get a uh, a picture of that cropped out when we take our break, so that I can I can share that on the stream so that everyone can see it without having to book in front of them. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you guys are are taking off and pulling out of there just fine, uh, unless you're trying to like overclock your engines or do anything really crazy or drastic. And like I said, you guys are pulling out well ahead of them. You don't really need to do that. Uh, you've got a, about a two day, uh, travel time uh, until you get to the, uh, diaspora. Uh, I'm not going to really require a lot of roles. It's basically just, uh, you know, uh, a piloting check, a, a quick piloting check just to, um, to calculate out an optimal route where you're avoiding, you know, any known you know, celestial bodies or something that could interfere with your, your path or your travel. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's just going to be that. So if you guys want to just take your time and, uh, you know, calculate that, that route out, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, that, that's essentially it. So any, well, anyone that surely, um, I was, yeah, it's too, too bad, too bad. Starfinder doesn't take into account Newtonian motion. Um, so um, you know, if if it would help uh, to find the the largest the largest near uh, celestial body to use uh, as a gravity sling, to give us some extra speed, because I've been I've been doing this uh, this run on a simulation uh, many times before. I've been so, um, saying that in the in the previous session that I'm running that sim. Yep. So the the big um, the big slingshot opportunity. There's actually a uh, a really interesting uh, phenomenon uh, in the um, in the diaspora. Uh, there's Havenex vortex, so mm -hmm. you could always uh, potentially you know keep working that. But in between Eox and the diaspora, at this point, there's no uh, there's nothing for you to kind of piggy pack off and try to, you know, slingshot ahead. All right, fair enough. Um, I'll just, I'll just keep the uh, the engines uh, within within uh, operational limits. Yep. Because um, okay. we're we're gonna need to push them later on. Yep. So you guys are basically just keeping everything at, uh, you know, as close to 100% as you can. That's uh, it's not really uh, at, at this point. You're not seeing him. Uh, he's outside of scanner range now. So you're not seeing where he went, uh, but you guys, you know, as far as you can tell, you went far ahead of him, uh, and you should be ahead for right now. So, but yeah, there's there is that. Um, so you guys are on your way out to the diaspora. Uh, you've got a couple of days of downtime, and you got that nice new tech lab. Nice and no UPBs. I work out so you guys can um you guys can go ahead if there's uh you know if you wanted to to make any equipment uh you've got a tech lab now so you can make equipment you can resize stuff uh you should have um essentially the the uh the time you got plenty of time so you guys can you know you've got all the time you need to to re uh adjust any equipment but if you wanted to create new equipment then you would just have to have the uh, the equipment to recycle down into it so technically you have to have about 10 times the value of similar equipment right sadly we don't have any nope okay that's yeah, okay wait we do have we do have the old uh the old ship parts still on board yeah, I guess technically. But, you do. but, but to... aren't we supposed to be returning those? <laughs> you are supposed to be returning those. But I mean, if, uh, okay. if, if you guys, <laughs> I mean, there are technically like, what was it? Would you say it was like 10K worth of loaner ship parts at least? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, technically, yeah. if you guys wanted to make something, <laughs> you could do it. But then we'd owe somebody another 10K. Yep. So uh, we can go ahead and uh, and cruise on. So let's let's say uh, 
if there's if there's nothing that you guys want to do, if there's anything you want to do, this is your your ultimate opportunity. You've got a couple of days of downtime. You can research anything. You can do whatever you want. Uh, it's basically two days of travel time. So this is your opportunity. If you don't want to do it, then we can go ahead and skip on to the arrival. Okay, so uh, as you guys go ahead and uh, make your way, you've got a couple of days of quiet downtime contemplation. Um, Ghost One, you're operating the ship and doing that every once in a while when you get, uh, you know, you get relieved, someone else comes up and, and decides they'll, they'll take the helm and give you a little break. Um, you, you know, you take those opportunities to go ahead and and run simulations on uh, have an X vortex and you know some of the slingshot maneuvers you might be able to do. Uh, so mm -hmm. you've got it nice and nice and fresh in your mind. Um, you know, Dr. Gray takes the opportunity to uh, heal up uh, uh, Clint and go ahead and get him all taken care of. Um, Clint seems to be extremely happy that he's not on EOX anymore. So there's that. Um, as far as everyone else, uh, you know, Stephen Gray basically spends all of his time in the, excuse me, in the guest quarters. Uh, he doesn't seem to come out and interact with the crew very much. Uh, and he refuses still to talk to anybody except for Dr. Gray. Uh, he, yeah, and he, then that's where I was figuring Dr. Gray is back chatting with Clint and uh, Dr. Gray, or, or Dr. Gray, Stephen Gray. Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Gray. So yeah, Stephen Gray. Basically, Stephen Gray, uh, and that's something that's common with Grays. They they don't tend to talk to other races at all. So you know he, he'll he'll you know casually chit chat with you because he he essentially considers you his equal. Uh, but uh, as far as Clint, he just you know tries his best to ignore him. Um, but you guys have you know they they have separate quarters because it's VIP. They basically have two deluxe rooms. Uh, so you know he's got his own room. So he just kind of. It stays off of there, but he uh, he'll come in and do some chit chat with you if you you want to talk about anything. Um, yeah. Uh, so Gustav was saying that he wanted to uh, you know spend some time with Clint, uh, talk with him, and maybe go to the gym and do some training. Uh, try to kind of you know teach himself how to uh, to go ahead and you know, maybe defend himself a little bit better, catch up on old times. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, and yeah, there's, there's multiple people here that can pilot too. So, uh, multiple of you can always relieve ghost one if he, uh, you know, needs to have some time away, but yeah, that's, that's essentially it. So as you guys are doing that, uh, you are traveling a couple of days and, uh, you start getting closer to the diaspora and as you do so, dum, dum, dum. shit gets real. <laughs> there we go. Let's see what you see here. A Millennium Falcon. <laughs> so pretty much as you guys are going on, you are, I'd say about uh, six or eight hours. Please don't drag the ship. Please don't. Leave, leave Quit ship playing alone. with tokens, children. Yes, uh, don't make me lock everything down. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as you guys are as you guys are getting closer, uh, you realize that some uh, very small, uh, very uh, non, uh, uh, essentially almost cloaked. They they have very very low signature. Some very small low signature ships come. Uh, you know, whizzing past you, and uh, you're you're several hours uh, travel away from the diaspora. Uh, you're kind of like out in the middle of nowhere, so it, you're you're kind of thinking at first, well, maybe it's just some random chance encounter. All right, and so Doctor Gray goes in there and starts scanning. Um, as you're doing that, you see the ships, which are you know. High, very very high speed fighters kind of circle around and then they come in and then they they basically hold uh, a, a almost a static position 
uh, and they're they're right in front of your path. So you can essentially choose to try to fly around them, or you can kind of uh, uh, slow down and talk to them. Uh, but they they seem to try to be uh, you know spreading themselves out in a way where they're basically between you and the diaspora. Can we hail them? Are we getting smuggled job? <laughs> Do they want to talk to us? <laughs> So <laughs> I think we should talk to them. You think you should talk to them? Okay. So with that, we're going to go ahead and say it's it's just about noon. Uh, so you get a, a hail, and as the 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 request comes up to speak to your ship, uh, we're gonna we're gonna leave that as a good breakoff point. If anybody needs to, uh, you know, uh, go and uh, do anything, let's just take about five minutes to. You know, grab ourselves drinks and do what we need to do. And then we'll come back in about five and see how this plays out. And and at that point, too, I'll report out to people what what kind of uh, armaments and shields and such we might expect from these is if we want to have trouble with them. Yep. We'll do. Perfect. <laughs> what are they going to say? Give us the gray. He unleashed a phage upon our species. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right. Five minutes. Doom, 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 doom.
Okay. So our AC should be one less. That plus one from the uh, engines only gives him a plus to his piloting check. Okay. Good to know. I will pop that down. So the, I'm pulling up all the rules. Now I have not done starship combat other than run through by myself. So I'm going to be a little, going to be a little bit rusty on this, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Well, I mean, they're X-wings, right? I mean, they don't have a chance against us. Yeah, they're they're fighters. So So what we have here um, is a failure to communicate. Yep. That is exactly it. So it almost does work a little easier to lock the tokens because, you know, you can move right. two and then turn one and yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go ahead and lock the tokens there. So. Tokens are locked now. Shouldn't they be rotated to face us? Are they not facing you? Nope. No. They're facing south on the map. Really? Yeah. Um, there you go. They were facing you on my side. I'm just putting them back the way that I just click the mouse wheel down and up. <laughs> so. And on my. That's weird. Like on on my other one, like if you guys looked at the stream, they look they look exactly the same now as they did when I load them up on both of them. So I assumed that everything. Yeah. Was for you guys. No, it looked good on both of those, but not on ours. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay, so everyone's back now? Oh, yeah, I'll take a look. Looks load. like, yeah, yeah. Cal. There we go. <laughs> so, all right, so we've got, uh, we've got a, a couple of these small uh, fighter ships. Like I said, they, they basically came out of nowhere. They didn't seem to have any... Um, they, they seem to almost be intentionally hard to detect. And as they come up, they, they message you. Uh, and they hail you. And as, as you, you get the hail, uh, as, essentially they, they deliver this message. Uh, so we've been sent to uh, stop you from going to the diaspora. You don't have to... Uh, you don't have to make this difficult. Uh, all that we've been told to do is delay you for a few hours. So if you want to sit here for a couple of hours, we'll go away. Other than that, we can make this difficult for you. Oh, so we're a few, hour, few hours ahead. Hmm, that's good. Well, he wants us to be a few hours behind, right? What's the call, Captain? Give me the order. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm certainly not going to stop. For the okay. Guy. Do we want to try to bribe them or fight them? Well, let's see if we can find out we who can, can they... Uh, 
I mean, you guys have you guys have all sorts of options to you. Uh, Dr. Gray, you did roll your computers check. Uh, so you have uh, multiple pieces of information on these guys. So let me go ahead and tell you what we've got here. Um, I am looking for... Okay. Uh, you got... Most of it. <laughs> Yeah, you got three three levels, so you got all the way through weapons. Uh, so uh, you can tell each ship has uh, two people in it, uh, which is not un unheard of for a fighter, but it's it's a little bit odd. A lot of times fighters are single single crew, uh, but this seems to be them doubled up. Um, they are pretty maneuverable. Uh, they've got a, a speed of eight. Uh, pulling this up here, so um, they they are tiny, speed of eight, uh, good maneuverability, so uh, similar maneuverability to what you have. Uh, let's see, they're, you've got their armor class, which is eleven. Their their TL, uh, so that's basically their locking armor class for like missiles and stuff like that, is also eleven. Uh, their hull, they don't seem to be damaged. They have 30 hull points. Uh, their shields. Uh, I don't see any shields on there. So, uh, just that, hull. yeah, it could be just, it looks like it's just hull. So they're just shields. There's no shielding. Um, and... Uh, the power core. Um, and they're they're just they've got uh, plenty of power right now. Uh, as far as the exact power core, um, it's it's just a tiny fighter, so it doesn't really have a, a a very complex power core situation going on. And then their weapon loadouts. I can you manage to get high enough? I can give you that. So uh, they have uh, light laser cannons on the front so they they're essentially equipped with light laser cannons um just so you guys know uh light laser cannons are basically 2d4 damage uh ship weapons so they they don't appear to be very uh well they're they're probably well armed for dealing with a light transport but you guys are a little bit heavier of a transport than maybe they were expecting so uh it's not not that bad of a fight if you guys did decide to duke it out with them. I'd like to uh, roll on Intimidate uh, Bluff and basically tell them that there's no way they're going to be able to handle us, so why not just move on your way and say we were too fast for them? Okay. Which one are you going to roll, though? Intimidate or Bluff? Uh, taunt with Bluff. because um, I, I mean, we're, we're kind of even-ish up, I think. I think I want to like make it so we're like way more intimidating than we actually are. Okay. No, 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 Captain. What you need to say is prepare to witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle station. <laughs> <laughs> so... Ah! <laughs> well, so... If... Uh, well, since Dr. Gray relayed the information... Uh, Cal would say, well, we can outrun them and we can keep diverting to our rear shields, re whatever, and just blast by these idiots. Are our weapons uh, on a turret or front facing? Turret. You're on a turret, so you can. Th that's the so one you can always thing. shoot backwards. Yep, you can shoot in any direction, and you've got very long range weapons, a lot longer range than they have, and you're faster than them. So there's very, very little threat all around. So. Uh, unfortunately, though, the the captain tries the battle station line, and the battle station line does not actually work because then the pirates are just confused as to why you're. <laughs> maybe his what, problem was he didn't what, use that line. Yeah, or, no. or maybe he didn't. He, he, they're they're just confused as to what you're what you're getting at. They're just like, yeah, no, we're we're gonna we're gonna wipe you off the face of the planet. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, while this is all happening, I'm making sure we're recording this transmission too for later use. Okay. So, all right, you've, you've gotten that, uh, you've, you've uh, essentially, you, you've basically hey, done the, the only thing that would not intimidate them. <laughs> you're, you're a bigger, more powerful ship. You've got everything going for you, but captain, this was not your day on that. So, uh, time for plan B. What's plan B? Captain, tell them we'll surrender if they tell us who hired them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, tell them that. Can, not can I roll it. another bluff check? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. They, they double down. They're like, yeah, we've got you. We can take you. So, there you go. All right, so you tell them, okay, we'll we'll surrender if you tell us who hired you. And and uh, you, you see the guy say, give me a minute, and he comes comes back. All right, and he goes away and and uh, shuts off comms. And then uh, about a minute later, the comms come back on. He said, uh, let me make his. Uh, yeah, so he's like, sure, I'll tell you who hired me. Uh, Denegan, Denegan Vito hired me, uh, said that I had to stop you guys from getting a diaspora. And it's recorded. And tell him that's not going to work and let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you guys pull a, a, a later and, uh, and start blasting through. So as you do that, uh, is is there any particular way that you're going to do this? Or are you going to just try to to get past them as best you can and, and go through? Well, what I'm go I mean, uh, are we are we getting through uh, through their squares in the first turn? Well, it's three dimensional space, right? I know. So yeah. just angle down or up or. Well, yeah. Are we passing around? them? Are we passing them uh, during the first turn? I mean, are are we fast enough for that? Yeah. They, if, yeah. if yes. If yeah, if yes, then I would probably recommend what's it called? Um, flyby maneuver. Okay. Or uh, if not, then I would probably go for evade, which increases our AC, so makes it dif more difficult to uh, for them to hit us. Okay. So um, that's you're you're the you're the pilot so that's going to be your your entire call which which way are you taking it because it, it's not going to be something where i mean unless the it, it's something specific where you know hey we need you to do this it's just going to be your call on how you're flying it right so that's why i'm asking like uh, are we passing them in this first round if yes then i'll go for flyby if not then i'll go for evade uh i mean that's entirely up to you guys you guys could uh, evade if you want to sit there and knock them out of the sky, or you can try to fly by if you're going to run past them. So, and anybody want to run or anybody want to fight? Go ahead and make your opinions known. That should be the cap that the cap's call. I can I can make calls on the, on the maneuvers. Uh, cap should make the call on uh, strategy. I don't really want them to slow us down. Um, can we just? Do we have turrets so we can shoot at them as we fly by? Oh, yep. Continue. Yep. Uh, what okay. it, the way the way it works is so we we basically go through um, go through phases. So um, we're we're basically just going to go. Uh, we start off with with engineering and then helm and then and then gunnery if we're actually going to try to combat this. Um, otherwise, we can. Uh, so, you know, basically, if, if you guys want to fight it out, we can roll initiative. If you guys want to run, uh, we, we don't even really need to roll initiative. You just need to roll uh, to more or less get past them and get through. Uh, and then you're faster than them. So, you know, they're they're not going to be able to keep up with you. Uh, they'll they'll probably be able to take a couple of shots at you. And we can I can just roll a couple of attacks to see how far they hit you until you're out of range. So you can just run okay. through. So it's, yeah, it's up to you. If you decide you want to fight, then you guys can fight it out. Um, you know that that's always it, or you can run. Right. I want to encourage uh, the piloting uh, with it, or use my diplomacy to help encourage piloting, so we can get just pilot through this. Right, but you need to answer if you're going to run or you fight. Run, run, run. is my okay. my decision. R R okay. Run, but shoot at them as we're running. Okay, I like sure. that. 
Run and shoot. Okay. Well, if we're going to run and shoot, let's. If that's going to be some fighting, let's just go ahead and roll initiative. So, oh, yes, um... All right. There's a 16. Well, it's a piloting. Oh, you want us in the combat tracker in order? Um... I don't think so. I, th I thought it's just the pilot that rolls, rolls a yeah, piloting check. Yeah, it's just pilot, piloting check. Ah. He goes first. Yep. <laughs> Captain used up. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Captain, <laughs> Captain used up his twenty. Have it. <laughs> Captain uses up his twenty. Pilot uses up his one. So there you go. The <laughs> the, the uh, quit rolling. <laughs> yeah, the the rats uh, end up getting an eleven. So they're gonna go ahead and go first. So as you guys are, uh, you know, like nope, too bad. Ha ha. We're gonna we're gonna do that. And they they. You know, the see your engine start to power up to go. Uh, they're going to take shots at you. So, um, let's see. Doesn't he get a skill check so he would get his bonus to piloting to that five? Um. Oh yeah, no, ghost, ghost one. Sorry, you got a uh, that that one was an initiative check. You wanna you wanna roll a piloting check for your so oh, for a, a ship. Check. Yep. And ship does my assist help if I'm assisting him? No. Nope. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of hard to assist on initiative. Damn there it, Jim. Thirty. Okay, you guys get to go first. That's way better than their eleven. <laughs> They're like, ha ha. Now we. Where are they? <laughs> okay. So, um, you have a speed of ten, so you can go ahead and uh, the grid should well, be all set up. Say it means they go first and we get to they move first and we get to react to it. Ah, okay. So they're they're going to move first and you're going to react. Okay. So they're going to um let's see. We just need them to get close enough so that they're in range. So let's do this. That's so weird. Uh Okay, well, I don't. I'm drawing like a line here, I guess. Give me a second. Uh, just middle mouse button over that token. Yeah, no, I was just drawing. It was oh. drawing. It wasn't just moving it. I don't know why it wasn't just moving. So <laughs> there we go. So yeah, their their movement phase is to go ahead and uh, to to move up there. So let's pop back over here. Okay, so uh, we get engineering and help. So we, actually, you guys get uh, an engineering phase too. So uh, they don't have engineers, so they're not going to get engineering phase. So as they're doing that, you guys can get an engineering phase, and then you guys can react to it on your helm phase. I'm going to divert power to the weapons. Okay. When does the... Science officer get to act. Um, do well. It says that there's engineering Next. helm and gunnery. Does that does science officer operate on engineering phase then? No, the engineer goes. Then it's the helm phase technically, uh -huh. and then it's in that helm phase. The captain can go if he wants to. The piloting check, you know, so that the pilot does his stun or his maneuver, okay. whatever. And the science officer. Okay, so yeah, I see it there. Science the officers phase. act okay. immediately before or after the pilot. So, and then gunnery. So basically, the com the actual rolling of the combat's last. So the engineer is going to decide what he's going to do. So engineer is throwing uh, the power to weapons. And um, you got a 21 on that. So... Um, and that's way more than the 14 that you needed. Uh, let's see. So. If we roll damage, all ones or twos. All ones or twos. There you go. Okay. So then. All right. So, yeah. Now it's the, uh, the either the captain or the. the uh, actually, it's captain's turn. So let's just go ahead and say captain. Captain. I'm going to encourage the pilot, I believe. 
use my diplomacy. Okay. Yeah, the captain doesn't necessarily get three turns, so he can act in whatever phase. Right. Yeah, you, you can basically decide to encourage somebody wherever. So. All right. So yeah, that's that's enough. So uh, you're gonna get. He adds a plus two then to his check. Right. Right. So make sure you're giving yourself a total of a plus three because you get one from the ship too. Uh, isn't it applied automatically? Uh, I don't no. think so. No, nope. yeah. no, it is not. You, you're right. going to have to... Unfortunately, they don't have ship combat built in, so you just have to make your rolls, and then we do it. So you're going to get a plus two gotcha. from the captain, a plus one from the ship. All righty. Um, so uh, since we are probably flying through their squares, I'm going to go for the the flyby. Okay. Uh, uh, yep. Gustav said on there that he's, he's going to assist you on piloting, because... Essentially, there's only one gun on there on the ship, uh, okay. so he he'll go ahead and, and assist you with the piloting. So you can add another plus one onto your your roll. So you get a total of a plus four. Uh, plus plus two for assist. Uh, okay, Isn't sorry. It? Plus yeah, the the plus five then. Okay. So yeah, uh, as I said, because uh, we are passing them um, in this turn, uh, I'll go for a flyby. So basically, just sneak past, uh, like between them or you know just below them, and uh, get us get us through without without them having a chance for like an opportunity attack. Okay, go go ahead and try to drag that ship and see if you can move it. Let's see. Uh, we have ten square speed. So you... Oh, we'll see if we succeed. Yeah, I mean, we, yep. we succeed either way. Uh, they just might get an attack of opportunity. So... And the DC for that is... Let me see. 20 plus twice the tier of the enemy starship. 24. If they're tier 2. Uh, no, they're not. They're not tier two. They're uh, like tier one half, but there's three of them. So I guess we, yeah, I guess we could say they're they're twenty. Uh, well, we one. only went through one square, right? Um. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Tw so twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Fingers crossed, guys. Just roll good. I mean, the <laughs> there you go. So there you go. Exactly 21. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so do we do like a barrel roll? Yeah, yeah, we do like a, we do like a barrel roll. I'll, I'll, I'll just do it, you know, so we're, we fly literally a few meters past the, past the fighter. Okay. So, um. Science officer is, uh, you're, uh, you're targeting a system. Uh, so yep. it was DC, uh, plus the tier DC of the starship. So probably DC plus one and a half times, plus its defensive countermeasures. Uh, yeah, it, this says DC is fifteen plus the, uh. Tier the ship plus countermeasures. So that would be 16 plus uh, their countermeasures are 1, so 17 is the DC. Okay. So, Some well, of those DCs got errated, just so you know. Oh, did they? I'm uh, not sure exactly which ones, but some of them were... were uh... I'll look. Yeah, I... I do not know, so we can we can look that one up later, though. Um, so if I got any the, other bonus, you know what? Yeah, I, no, I'll, I'll 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 let's just targeted. Let's let's just go ahead and say this: they're less than one, so I'm not going to go ahead and round up for for that DC because they're they're less than a tier one. I'll just set it at sixteen. That's we'll just say you made it. You just barely 
basically just barely made it. So, so yeah, target target the middle ship. So yeah, when you're shooting, uh, and, and you, because they don't have the the combat in there, uh, you just have to you know make your make your rolls on it. Uh, but yeah, the he basically targeted the power core of the middle ship. Um, so it basically it says that uh, the next attack made by your starship that hits the enemy ship scores a critical hit on a natural 19 or 20. Uh, if it does critical damage, uh, uh, if the attack deals critical damage, it affects the chosen system. So there you go. All right, and uh, let's see. That's the balance action for the scan action. Okay, DC of the computer's check is five plus one and a half times the tier of the starship being scanned. Uh, target system, DC is five plus one and a half times. Okay, so that's from the errata. I will put the link on my notes page. Yeah, that would, that would be great. Okay, so yeah, no, uh, then you you easily made it. You went ahead and uh, you're you're able to target that one. So that should be everybody's turn there. Uh, they don't get to attack you guys uh, because you've basically maneuvered past them. Your your pilot has outmaneuvered them. Uh, so their weapons are all facing the wrong way right now. So I believe shoot them. I believe that only leaves us with uh, the gunnery phase. So go, time and go. I shoot the one in the middle. Okay. Okay, 16. 16 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll your damage there. All right, for nine points of damage. Nice. So I've got to kind of notepad this because I don't have a combat tracker for ships. <laughs> It feels so archaic when you're used to doing it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Back so, to tabletop. Yep. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you uh, you basically do a, a good blast of damage to him. Um, let's see here. His uh, that is uh, above his critical threshold for damage. Yeah. So you do critical damage, so you're doing that to the power core. Awesome. So let me see how that works here. So we got the the critical damage. Um I know it means that they take uh they have a, a chance of the actual system not working. So with the power core um, a malfunctioning or wreck power core can affect critical damage conditions. So, so the first one is glitching. Um, so basically, it's they're, they're at negative. That ship particular ship's at a negative two to all rolls. So that seems to be how it works, because it, a power core basically affects everything. That's the, 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 essentially the best one that you want to get. So, all right. So that ship's, uh, basically power core is going in and out from the precise, uh, targeting that Dr. Gray aligned on and Tybin's, uh, superior attack role. And with that, you've, you've got one ship just kind of almost sputtering, uh, and you guys have made your way through. So, and it's 10 damage, by the way, because ones are twos. Oh, ones are twos. Oh, yeah. So there you go. So 10 damage. Nice. All right. Uh, that should be the round, I believe. Yep. So it'll be next round. And I'm going to have to... I need more power, Scotty! <laughs> so I'm so with their movement does their um, maneuverability allow them to turn on this no 
uh, um, no, they, it, it won't. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out. They don't have to go very far. They only they only really need to turn around a little bit. So I'm just trying to figure out. Um, they can do a flip and burn, right? I was gonna say they could do a flip and burn, but they they might be able to just move in their um their their one square movement because we don't we don't have the the grids on here. They could kind of like just go one. Like uh, I'll show you. Okay, like they've got eight eight movement, so we can. Jeez, I keep doing this. I really wish I had regular tokens here. I these aren't tokens that are attached to the combat tracker, so it's it's hard to actually move things around. Yeah, it's making me draw I mean, lines. <laughs> so I, it looks like they could form well, up on our rear and be facing us. But what about Captain so Sputters? The, the one in the middle. He, he's got to make a piloting check. But like I'm saying, I don't, I don't know that they have to make a piloting check if they're, uh, just if they're just you know using their eight squares to move. No, you know, they don't. In, in a slow circle around, they just need to turn around to face you guys. But the question right. is, does he have eight squares if he's going in well, and out? Basically, of power? yeah, absolutely, because they they have good maneuverability and they only need to take uh, one square or one hex of movement between making a turn. Which these aren't hexes, but yeah, yeah, they're not hexes, but but um, that uh, so yeah, so that that should still give him give him uh, enough enough room to to make that turn. Okay, I'm having I'm having significant issues here. Just give me just Jesus. unlock the tokens. I'm stuck on so the you can drawing. Put it away. I'm, I don't know, like I can't even get to unlock tokens right now. I'm stuck on drawing for some reason. Weird. Okay, right yeah. click. Give me just a second. Oh, that's why. Ha ha ha. I, I was I was looking at the <laughs> I was looking at the uh I wasn't using the GM side. Let me share this again. <laughs> I was oh. on the I was on camcorder on side. side. Yep. So that'll do it. That that'll do it. So let me um Suddenly, out of the blue uh, or out of the black of the universe, um uh, yeah. a, a floating camera appeared. <laughs> yeah, that's that was my issue. Okay, so yeah, the uh, they they basically just meander around. Uh, you know, they they use a couple squares of movement each to just kind of loop around and uh, move a, a square or two closer to you uh, and and face your general direction. So, uh, getting ready for an attack run here. Um, let's see. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six seven we'll put them like right on your rear they should be able to do that in in seven movements what okay well i mean they they can turn in one square yeah, it, uh, it's, yeah don't so, worry about it it'll speed things up <laughs> yep, yep so they're they're coming up to you guys um and uh so now it is going to be the uh, engineering phase. So, Cal, what are you doing? Um, Cal's going to do power to the uh, weapons again, I think. Okay. All right. So, weapons roll twos instead of ones. Yep. Which is very handy when you're rolling 44s. So, uh, that's it. So, uh, Helm. So that was that was their movement. Uh, right. You can go ahead and um, make your movement yeah. how you want. Uh, continuing uh, evade, I guess. Well, yeah, evade. Uh, increasing the uh, uh, AC. Okay. Okay, I've got assist from from Gustav. That's great. So it's going to give you a plus three total, and then. Um, Evade DC is 10 plus uh, twice our uh, Starship's tier. So that's 14. Okay. And then, All Captain, right. just before you roll that, did, did you have any particular way that you wanted to handle this? Yeah, yeah if I can assist with that. That's... Sure. Go for it. Okay. Ooh, nice. Yep, so you get a, a, another plus two there. So you're going to add a plus five to your roll. Oh, yeah.
Perfect. All right, so you are evading. And that in that should increase our AC by... Let's see. Uh, plus two circumstance bonus to AC and TL until the start of the next round. Nice. Okay. So I'll give you a 15 AC. Okay. And then your movement? And a full uh, full movement until I'm uh, set otherwise. So that's 10, 10 squares. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And I'm just... Uh... Unfortunately, these yep. these NPC ships they it has laser cannons written there, but it doesn't give me all the uh, the information, the calculations. So I'm just looking up. It says range short. I'm just looking up what short range actually is in the hexes. I believe it's five. Uh, let's see, so yeah, uh, short range is five hexes. Medium range is ten. Long range is twenty. So yeah, they're they're going to be at you're actually going to be at long range for them. Uh, let's see, negative two penalty for each range increment. So they're going to be at negative four to hit you, and that middle ship is actually going to be at uh, a negative, negative six. six. Yeah. So all right, we're going to go ahead and approve that movement. So you move up there. So you're at long range for them. Now you guys, nice thing is you have a long range weapon, so you're at no negative to hit them. Uh, so, uh, now on the, uh, the helm phase, you guys move first on the combat phase. You guys move, you guys attack first too, right? Because you want initiative. Well, no, they, they actually happen simultaneously. So even oh. if we blow them up, they, they their damage, get... if they hit us still occurs. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do this then. Um, I'm going to roll these out. So. I'm just doing them on the order I have it here. Okay. So the first one, uh, which is the, the top ship, which is undamaged, uh, gets a, uh, with the negative four, ends up getting a four to hit. So the first one blasts past you. The second one, with the negative six ends up getting a 16 which that's the damage one they rolled a 19 which just um barely hits you guys are uh, you taking into account the plus two for the maneuver he did to our ac yeah yeah your ac is 13 normally so it gets up to a 15 he rolled he rolled a 19 so uh even with a mm -hmm. Even with a negative six, it ends up still being uh, only a negative three on that. So it takes a 19 because he, he has a good plus to hit on those weapons. So um, that negative six penalty turns a plus three into a negative three. So that 19 goes down to 16. So yep. instead of uh, that hits the 15 AC. Uh, the other one, because he's taking a, a negative four is a negative one, which also gets to be a 16. Uh, so that one hits. So two of them actually hit you. So I yeah, I wasn't I wasn't doubting your math. I just wanted to make sure you were taking into account the AC bonus. Yep, yep, no problem. Uh, so the first one hits the rear shields for five points of damage, and the second one hits the rear shields for six points of damage. Uh, and because they're shields, there's no uh, there's no like damage pass or anything like that. So that's just uh, damage taken. So, um, so yeah, do. I'm just wondering, does a um, do you know if if like uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have like current and there's no like current and uh, maximum health on these things, right? It's just you set them to what they are for shield points. Yep. Yeah, like, no, because you have a running counter that it's uh, 90 up top to the left, so you can just scroll down your all reverse always remember what it was gotcha gotcha okay. you just have to track it yeah gotcha okay well i'm it's currently set to 23 so i'm just i'm gonna manually track it here so your rear shields uh went from 23 down 11 so uh they're down to 12 points 12 out of 23 
So your your real sh real shields have taken a, a nice hit here. And Tybin gets his 18 to hit. That definitely hits him. Same one in the the same one in the middle. Okay. And I'm sorry. Do, did did Doctor Gray end up doing the same targeting as before? Yeah, I I just maintain the target. Okay. So eight. That's actually ten points, uh, because those two ones are yep. now twos. So that's ten points, which is awesome. That's again another critical. It's the same as last time. Uh, and he's gotten one stage worse on his um. On malfunctioning. His, his malfunctioning, yeah. So let me uh, pull that one up here. So the malfunctioning. Yeah. So if you if you edit the aft shields, mm -hmm. that way we can tell where we're at. Oh yeah, I can do that. And actually, while I'm there, let me let me open up the ship sheet so that it's seen here. Um, and zoom out a little bit so on the stream everyone can see where you've where you've moved to. Um, there we go. So we can do that, and then I'll go ahead and edit your shields on the other one. All right. So you're at twelve on your rear. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Uh, and he's taken that, so his malfunctioning goes from uh, glitching to malfunctioning. Um, let's see. Negative four penalty. Uh, they can't take push actions. If the power core is malfunctioning, uh, all actions take a negative two penalty. Okay, so uh, the negative two only would have affected now, so I, I misread that. I thought it was a negative two to everything based on the description above, but... Seems like now only everything else gets a negative two. So yeah, they're they're still at a negative two. Um, one more hit to that power core though, and uh, you'll you'll basically wreck the power core. Uh, so that's essentially a negative four penalty to everything. So, uh, and your turn. Go. Uh, you guys did your attack. They did their attack, and that's the end here. Uh, so yeah, at this point, you guys have uh, you know blasted them a little bit. Uh, you guys, if you want to, can essentially keep them at long range and destroy them, or you guys can just get out of range at this point because you can go past long range. I think we just keep flying away. Okay. Yeah. Should well, I continue? Should I continue increasing the distance then? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All so right. you guys. You guys are faster than them. Basically, at this point, you're already long range for them. The next thing you're going to do is move beyond long range, and I'm just going to say at that point, they're they're just like, oh crap, we screwed up. So, uh, a little more engine power. A little more engine power. Okay. And uh, you know, at with that, you guys have successfully made it beyond the pirate blockade. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, with uh, a little bit of time, your your shields will go ahead and uh, increase, and you guys have gotten uh, past them, and you can move your way on to the diaspora. Woo! So, so let's pull that one up. So um, you guys are heading to a uh, a large Yosoki. Uh, trade frigate, which is called the uh, the Ferrabarium, okay, uh, and the the Ferrabarium is basically uh, uh, so like a group of Yosoki basically took a wrecked out frigate and managed to take it over, get it repaired and working, and they operate it as the main trade hub of the diaspora. So the diaspora is a giant. Uh, more or less like a, a giant asteroid cluster. Uh, there's no real planet there, though there's some icy planetoids and things like that in there. Uh, there's some large asteroids that have been, uh, you know, cored out as bases. There's some small asteroids that have been cored out as bases. There's lots of resources there and lots of places to hide things. So it tends to be favored by uh, pirates and smugglers. So uh, what these uh, Yosoki figured out is if they offer the free captains, which are uh, uh, 
more or less privateers, you could say, uh, or pirates to some. Uh, they figured out if they offer them uh, repairs, then they can do that in exchange for protection. So the, the free captains and the pirates there essentially offer protection to this frigate, and this frigate just is a, is a, essentially a neutral zone where people can come in and trade and uh, get their ships repaired. So uh, you guys can go ahead and uh, make your way to that frigate. It's uh, not that hard to find. Uh, and uh, as you're as you're coming up and landing on it, you guys actually see uh, uh, you guys see Denegan actually taking off from it as you guys are landing. What? <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. How did he beat us? That that is a good question. So here's it, a question: Can it, we so scan it, it to make it, sure it's exactly the same ship? It it has been two days. You you guys can go ahead and give it a try. Uh, go ahead and roll a computer's check to. Or to see if Negan's actually on board it to make sure like he's not running a second ship that looks the same. That was the first the first thought that occurred to me. All right. So. Uh, oh, can I give assist too? To the computers check? Yeah. Are you skilled in computers? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just enough. Okay. So we can add two onto that. So twenty-four. Um. So yeah, you're you're able to to kind of jump on and, uh, you know, help. Dr. Gray get a little bit of scanner data. Dr. Gray, as far as you're concerned, it's the it's the same same ship as before. Uh, you don't have information on the exact contents that they're holding or anything like that. Uh, but you see them leaving there. Uh, you oh. you have no idea how long he was on on the the frigate, but you know that he, uh, as far as you can tell, it's it's him. So I'll send that out to our our other monitors or whatever, so other people can see. Okay. So yeah, you guys, you guys all kind of get the flash up. A, hey, you know, it, it that that is, you know, the, that ship that looks like Denegan's is is his ship, and uh, or it seems to be the same ship, and it's leaving ahead of us. <clears throat> so when we scanned before, we probably, I mean, if he stepped onto the ship, we would have the bio data off him from the first time. Do we get the same person well, on this other ship? You don't the the scans. So you'd have to sit there and like really be running like a, a deep sp scan to get all of that information um he got information on ge generally like the the you know the the layout of the power systems uh the hull the shields stuff can like we just that. hail him and see if he's on the ship uh certainly can can we just like hail him and flip him off <laughs> you, you certainly can <laughs> i mean that would be the way to figure out whether he's on the ship or not right yeah, hey, you dirty bastard. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can go ahead and... And it, it, has, it has been two days, so, I mean, can we scan yep. again, or... We just did. Well, you I just think. did. Yeah, you just did. It's... Uh, that so, was just not a... Well, the thing is, it's been two days, but he does have a faster ship. Yeah. Oh, I know. I realize that. Like, yeah, you, you, like, you guys took off way faster than him, and you guys were ahead of him. Oh, but, damn. But in your in your initial scans, you were you were realizing he wasn't running at 100 percent power, and he did have a faster ship. So, all right. So, uh, yeah. So if the captain wants to hail him, uh, he can go ahead and and hail him and make any yeah, sort of a, a diplomacy or do. bluff or whatever you want. I think he just did. <laughs> did he? I didn't see it there. Yeah, he rolled oh, a 28. Oh man. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you go ahead and, uh, you see that. And then as you do that, you see the engines on that ship light up. I mean, they are just completely, completely cranked. Uh, and they go, just go rocketing off, uh, so yeah, that's 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 essentially it. There's no response to the communication. You just kind of send your yeah send your message over and try to get him to to go in there. And uh, Captain, I don't know what you said, but he he ran like a dog with his tail between his legs. What were you saying? 
<laughs> oh, I don't know. Just giving him a hard time. You were coming for him still. So, <laughs> okay. We're coming for you. And apparently he did not like that. So, uh, yeah, he, he went ahead and, uh, and blasted off. So yeah, you guys can land on this trade frigate. Uh, again, this is the, uh, the Ferrobarium, uh, a giant trade frigate. Um, they, is there any way to expedite, like to make some rolls to expedite us loading the uh, cargo? Uh, oh yeah, just just uh, put put the cargo in the in the hold. I'll open the door and just uh, just throw yep. it out. That's with a maneuver. Essentially, what you've got is you've got two options. The captain can do his uh, can do a diplomacy check to see if he can get priority in uh, you know your landing. And uh, you know the 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 loading of your cargo, and uh, you know priority for docking because essentially this is a big frigate. It, they've only got so many docking bays for people to to come in and and uh, you know attach to the ship. So um, he can make his diplomacy check to go ahead and get priority on there. And then once you guys get there, you're going to have to try to you know essentially everyone's going to need to run out and scramble and try to load up cargo as fast as they can. And we could just do that with simple initiative checks. So, so diplomacy then? Yep. Roll your diplomacy. Oh, double net twenties, dude. Uh, you you call up and and you're just like, yeah, I need emergency landing. You know, we uh we have a, a critical situation here, and they just they fully red light the the largest landing bay there, and just say, yeah, go ahead, get on immediately. And they just go ahead and red light you to to, to jump on. Uh, you're able. So if you want to try to, you know, position yourself uh, for a fast exit, you can go ahead and roll a piloting check to try to land backwards. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> okay. Ooh, nice. You got a plus two, and then you get a plus one from the ship, so you get a, a plus three on your piloting check. Okay. There you go. That's enough. So yeah, you basically come the with the ship screaming in, uh, flip it around backwards, gun the engines, and uh, you know pretty much blast everything behind you away with a quick blast as you stop dead in, uh, drop your your landing cargo bay, and there is. Uh, a place for you to go ahead and uh, get that that cargo off of your ship. So of course, there's place now. <laughs> <laughs> can can I ask our hacker to do something while we're loading and unloading? Uh, you can certainly ask Doctor Gray. I think our hacker is actually Cal. It's, yeah, Cal's uh, Cal's a good hacker too. Cal's Cal's okay, probably whichever, actually whichever, a little bit better whichever than Whichever one Gray. of you. So here's the situation. Um, Every time somebody like does this stuff, there should be video log and record of all this. Is there any way? And I wouldn't think it'd be high security just because it's general cameras. Can you take a look at like the scans that this freighter got from Negan's ship and like the video of them coming in and unloading to see if like you see Negan get off or get back on or if you or see how long he was here, like just timestamps and yeah, stuff. I should be able to see like just when they when they came Technically. in. Technically. Technically, no. You have to have access to the computer, and unless I have a wire to it, a wireless link to it, or a computer that is actually connected to it, you can't get the information. If uh, the thing is, is there a station you could sneak off and get to while we're unloading and loading? So it Maybe. is. It, so it, it is literally a race. It, this is basically get the cargo off of here and get it into the proper hands as fast as possible. If you want, you can do that, but you don't know if basically you're going to be out looking for this and if the whole crew is going to be, you know, basically waiting on the ship for you to come back uh, yeah, because you have to, you have to find a place to, you have to find a place to get to it. I mean, you guys can try that if you want, but I'm just warning you, it might end up slowing you down because you're pulling off everything. It doesn't perfectly look like we're going to win out. anyways. <laughs> yeah. You're pulling off everything to jet out of here, like seconds behind him actually. So yeah, well, this, or this, could somebody maybe use his wonderful diplomacy skills to figure out from the station what time this guy came in and out? Because it sounds like it'd just be general flight data, like I mean, it wouldn't guys, be anything yeah, secret. Yeah, how long Negan ship was here? You guys could just ask someone that's in the bay. I mean, that's he he just left from the ship. You could just ask around. 
Because, I mean, like, if his ship's been sitting here for a day or two, then, yeah, that proves that it wasn't. All right, so the, if, if the captain wants, he can ask that, but you guys need to make an initiative check, uh, at least two of you, for pushing that cargo out. So, okay. Yep, so you guys, you guys do really good. You just jump on there, start, you know, basically running this uh, big uh, platform of, you know, hover platform covered with cryogenically frozen uh uh glass glass or eggs <laughs> yeah which are are don't look in those <laughs> yeah yeah don't just you, you know basically get it off of there uh, uh there was uh someone comes running up to you and and said yeah i heard there was a and uh, you guys had an an urgent uh an urgent need here i think that was the next platform over uh, I thought I thought you had some urgent delivery that needed to be on the ship like right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, bring it on. Okay, and careful, so, careful about the omelet. <laughs> so you guys go ahead and and dump your your cargo. Um, when you go ahead and dump your cargo, uh, you are told that um, there is someone named Sadira that needs to speak to you. And uh, tell her to hit us up on comms. <laughs> okay, so uh, they said that well, Sadira doesn't speak through comms, but she's in that room over there. Oh, so now we gotta go talk to somebody. Go, yep. go, go, go. All right, I'll rush over there. This sounds like a way of locking somebody in a room so we can't leave. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was this part of? I don't remember any of this. Well, you gotta you gotta get the cargo to the right person. So, so you guys basically start you know hauling this stuff off the ship, and uh, you're you're told that Sidira needs to speak to you, and she's over in that room. So, so so a, here's a question. Question. I don't know if I'm necessarily needed, it, and we don't necessarily have to have every person reach there. Do you, you want don't. someone who's non-essential like myself to go talk in case we get locked in there? Well, I well, think I, I think. <laughs> worrying about getting locked in there isn't a great generally it's the the captain of the ship that goes and talks to people but i mean if you With go a in bodyguard. There, if you go in there yeah you can send the captain and a bodyguard and then you can have everyone else outside if you want if i'm just worried about there. someone getting locked in there for a couple hours or something we'll be back captain well, you guys, you guys were told you're supposed to deliver the stuff here, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is it, I think well, we did I, that. I, I, I think I, I no, but you haven't delivered it to the person. Uh, let's we, let's just, yeah. let's, just, just being paranoid. let's just yeah. We, let's how about this? Stop being paranoid. That's the person who you're supposed to deliver this stuff to. <laughs> you're just told that you're supposed to deliver it to somebody here who will contact you when you arrive, and you've just been contacted and told, yeah, Sadira is looking for you. You need to go into that room. So. <laughs> We, Let's go into the room. <laughs> so, right. uh, while everybody's unloading, I'll go over to the room. Yep. So, Captain and whoever else wants to not be unloading. So, we'll say the the people with the highest initiative on there. Uh, it was yeah, uh, unloading. Yeah, you can send the soldier. Cal, Cal and Gustav. Cal and Gustav. So, yeah, Captain Tybin. Uh, Ghost one probably gonna want to stay on the ship. My guess. Um, probably. Yep. Yeah. I'll, I'll jump just helping with the unloading, opening opening the bay door and shit. Okay. So yeah, uh, so you're basically there, with pilot ready. Uh, Doctor Gray can choose to go with you or not. That's fine. So you guys can go in to uh, meet Sidira. Now Sidira is a Sarcesian. Uh, Jeez, this is. Oh, so let me see if I can send you a picture. This is. One that's armed, but that's a Sarcesian. Oh yeah, space. Those wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. solar they can space wings. Space. So basically, they are assumed to be the original inhabitants of the planet that is essentially the the rubble that the, is the diaspora now was once a planet, and they are assumed to be the original inhabitants of that planet. So, uh, so yeah, you see uh, Sadira in there, and she takes a a quick look at you, and says, "Wow, you guys are in 
Uh, you guys are in quite a hurry. And I can understand why. Danakin just left a few minutes ago. Uh, and he was on here and off pretty quick. And it looks like he was trying to avoid you guys. But uh, uh, he managed to, to get out of here ahead of you. So I've got good news and I've got bad news. How do you want it? Uh, bad first. Okay. The bad news is I don't need you to deliver that here. This I'm All just right. telling you where it needs to be delivered. Okay, so the good news is you don't have to go very far. Oh, that was a setup. <laughs> you don't have to go very far. So there's a small outpost near Bando on Nisus. Now, Nisus is the uh, essentially the giant ice ball with a, a solid, you know, water core. So it's just giantly, a, a, it's basically a gigantic blob of water uh, that has an icy uh, outer coating on it. Uh, they've got a couple of different, uh, a couple of different outposts there, and there's an outpost near uh, Vando, and if you go ahead and <clears throat> deliver the eggs there and I'll give you the coordinates and <clears throat> excuse me she hands you a little data pad I'll give you the coordinates go ahead and deliver the eggs there uh, they will give you your second package uh, that is the the one bound for verses uh, when you're there uh, also uh, just so you know uh, Denegan has uh, essentially tipped off the Hell Knights that you guys are uh, transporting illegal goods in the area. What? <laughs> so we're not Knights? worried about no fucking Hell Knights. <laughs> Those guys are badasses. Let's run. <laughs> so, so, uh, is he that, delivering a package to the same planet? You guys are are literally transporting the same thing to the same places. It's a race. So he didn't deliver here either. He had to keep going. Yep. He yeah. he landed he landed the ship uh in pretty much the same situation as you, but he just left a couple minutes ahead of you. Well, right. as soon as they get back and tell me, I'll start loading the ship back up. So okay. so here's the thing. Did so, did Denegan so, physically come in here and talk to her? Uh, she says that yes, Denegan came in. All right. So he he came in and talked to her, uh, and he was. Can just I sense motive on her? You can. Uh, do you want to tell your crew to load the load the ship back up? Because you haven't informed people outside of the room yet. Um. Calms. Yeah. I, I kind of want to sense motive on her as she's telling me this, so that then I can actually trust her, sort of thing. Okay. Go for it. Uh, you, it seems like she's actually being helpful. All right. So gonna, she, yeah, she, the crew. hold she, up guys, bring it back. Yeah. She, she basically says the, the captain, the captain was a good friend and, uh, Denegan's an asshole. So, uh, go get him. <laughs> it tells you to, to basically to, to jet out. So. Wow. Well, sounds need like that. If any of that information is relayed, maybe you can try and get a contact for somebody on this ice ball, and maybe we can get him delayed. There you go. Yeah, you guys can you guys can go ahead and give that a, a try. Um, so uh, essentially, you guys can you guys can really quickly just you know back uh, the the eggs back onto the ship, stow them in the the cargo hold. Uh, you guys can jet out of there. Is there anything that you need to do while you're on the ship before you take off? Just make sure everything's nice and hidden inside of our secret compartment. Actually, uh, uh, the, the, the crate with the other stuff that we're delivering to, um, to Versys, um, is that illegal here in Diaspora? Well, you don't know what's in it. Well, yeah. You just... He, he said that it's something that's going to be illegal in Verses, so you, you have no clue what's inside of it. Our whole ship is full of shit that's illegal, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of a moot point. It's, it's basically a, a scan-resistant box, so you essentially have to open it up, and if you open it up, there's a chance that someone will be able to find out that you opened it, and you're told not to open it. So right. that's up uh, to you guys if you want to try to... Would she have, 
Would she have mm-hmm. a, dec- uh, a, a decoy for the for the Hell Knights for us? Um, I can I can pay for that. Uh, a a decoy for the Hell Knights? Yeah, uh, they- something something that is slightly illegal, but not 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 enough to uh, to warrant you know arrest or or anything. They they, they could just take it and and uh, send us on our way. I don't. Denegan told them exactly what you guys were carrying. They're uh. they're looking for glass serpent eggs. Bastard. <laughs> What's He's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. So basically, the hell and the 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 hell knights. So uh, the hell knights are well, essentially but... a a marauding band of uh, lawbringers. So think of like uh, an organization full of judge dreads. That's it's yeah. Kind but, of... but hold on. What if we take something on board that isn't illegal, but maybe just cargo, and then. If they board us, then, then they'll know that he lied, and maybe that would bring him trouble. Well, we have all those ship parts that we can say we're actually transporting. The, I, I, it doesn't, here, doesn't really matter. He, he gave them an so, exact description of so what we're, here's, we're transporting. But they're not going to find it on our ship. Right. DC-50 smokers. They're not going to find it. That is we entirely, don't have that. That is entirely true. The thing that you're not, re- you're not remembering is he's ahead of you, and yep. if you get boarded and the Hell Knights spend, like... Yeah, let's hours have him get boarded. Ship. Yeah, if, if they're spending twelve hours searching your ship, he's essentially one. <laughs> so the 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 but main goal just... would be to avoid the Hell Knights completely, not try to have something fake on your ship. Because if if the Hell Knights have boarded your ship, you've essentially lost. We got... Yep. All right, piloting skills. We got... Well, if we have if we have to slow down or whatever for them to, I mean, we could always have them scan us, and they won't find it. Well, they, yeah, they don't the, the Hell Knights are the Hell Knights are gonna. Just oh we'll we'll scan your ship. Oh no, we don't detect anything. Go ahead. They're they're gonna want to um, like physically tear your ship apart. They're gonna they, judge dread they, the crap out of you. They they well, are can... they are judge dread. They are the law. They will they will basically do what they see fit, whether it's um you know whether it's uh, justifiable you know, or not. Yeah yeah they they're like oh that guy stole something. Boom, shoot him in the head. <laughs> you know. Okay. Well, well we can not, always send you. What, if what he's I, ahead of us, then we can use the same ploy on him, can we not? Can we just say that we can contact the Hell Knights and say that he's thrown us under the bus when he was the culprit, and then we just uh, you know you, show up later? You you can give that a try. Directly contacted the Hell Knights would essentially just you know let them know that you're you're in the system and you know operating around and stuff. So I mean, that's that's up to you. Uh, however you guys want to play that but the the real question i guess the question of urgency that's on my mind is how quickly are you guys getting off of the station because you've pulled off everything to this point yeah. precisely we were putting leave. it back on yeah right no every everything's it. everything's everything's on it's just a question of did you have anything no, you let's go. on the station no. before you take off okay so no, yeah you're, no, you're we're, we're booking so piloting check to take off Okay, uh, I can. Yeah, let's let's do a piloting check. Plus, <sighs> plus one from the ship. Anyone else wants to? There you go. You got your assist. So another nice. plus two. Uh, okay, so plus Captain, five. Another. Yep. So plus five. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> and then I screw it up. <laughs> 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 under uh, under under pressure. You love those ones. <laughs> uh, I do. Un- under pressure. It was like me last game. Oh man. So you uh you blast off and uh you end up like just throttling it to get out of there. It just as hard as you did taking off from Eox. The only difference is uh this time you forgot to uh release the docking clamps. And so you're just like basically starting to rip pieces of the floor up before you realize, flip the switch, and then blast off with a like slightly shredded, uh, you know, landing surface behind you. <laughs> I'm I'm just reaching over and pushing buttons on his keyboard. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> so Denegan will pay for that. Yeah, <laughs> Denegan will pay for it exactly. So yeah, you uh, you you probably didn't leave there in the uh, uh, the 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 best means for uh, the um, the shirsak. That didn't make the best impression. The the shirsak kaya, which is that's the Yasoki 
uh, trade salvagers uh, that that run the, the the salvagers that run that frigate. But uh, you 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 did well enough to get off of there. So <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you didn't crash it or anything. You just did a little damage to the ship on your way out. So. All right. It's luckily it's a ship that repairs stuff all the time, so it's not, you know, just like oh again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what I'm what I'm thinking, uh, just just quickly, um, how to avoid the the uh, the Hell Knights. Uh, what I'm thinking is kind of a kind of a, a trick. Mm -hmm. Um. If uh, if I plot the if I calculate the the exact course uh, according, you know, uh, like. Uh, Use use uh, microgravity of the asteroids to just navigate us straight to uh, straight to uh, Nisus. Um, we could uh, we could bring the ship uh, we could bring the ship's power down and just be just be you know totally totally passive another celestial body like silent running. So, yeah, like totally switch off. So yeah, you could you could try to do silent running where you guys are essentially keeping all of your systems at a minimum except for the the engines to to keep you going to lower their ability to scan you uh, another option is to take a less direct route which would probably be a, a little bit slower but it's uh you're guessing that denegan would you know basically uh you know give them you know they are here and they are going there so if the hell knights were going to set up a blockade they're probably going to set up a blockade on the most straight route uh, if he told him, especially you guys are trying to go fast. So trying to figure out maybe you could curve around some other celestial body. Uh, you know, maybe there's some big asteroid or something that you could kind of take the <laughs> far side of. Uh, it might add a few minutes onto your trip. Um, but, you know, depending on your filing check, that might be negligible. Uh, that's that's another option. Uh, so uh, uh, the other one is just basically go blockade runner style and run through as fast as you can. Uh, engines blazing, just try to... to nuke the the engines thinking that no matter what kind of big hell knight destroyer they have out there you guys are going to be faster than it faster may be tougher uh -uh. oh definitely not tougher uh, the hell knights will will eat you alive as far as their uh their ship goes but um yeah so the, you guys have essentially three really good options uh it's just a matter of picking one and then we we check it out and see what happens I'm voting for a blockade runner. Me too. Triple that. All right, just go blazing by as fast as you can, huh? Well, um, I mean, it's obvious we're not going to get around it, so <laughs> and not be. Uh, I mean, he's already got a leg up on us. So the longer we take, the more chance he is going to win it, and that all this is for Nye. Okay. So, Cal would say, let's just go for it. Or we spend an extra minute and possibly don't even encounter them. Can we possibly. do a, a check of some sort to see how well we know their ships? Like, roughly? How fast they are? Well, I mean, it's a diaspora. Uh, there's asteroids hey, yeah. everywhere. We can go yeah. a longer route and probably avoid them. Yep. So, uh, so uh, all right. Uh, Give me captain or anybody that wants to roll a culture check. And I, I can tell you what you guys know about Hell Knights and their ships. Actually, as a as a ace pilot, I should I should have a plan, plenty of that kind of information. Uh, you get a Ty minus five to the check. And Tybin actually is, uh, because they're a paramilitary organization, I believe, Tybin, you can actually get a bonus to that nat 20 you just rolled. So I think it's a minus five on the DC. What's that? I think it's oh, minus five. Yeah, yeah, minus five on the DC. So yeah, uh, basically, Ty Tybin's Tybin's one hundred percent got it. Even if even if no one else did, uh, he can he can tell you uh, the ins and outs of the the Hell Knights pretty well. Um, so what you're looking at is uh, their fighters are about a speed ten, uh, and uh, they're Pretty, pretty gnarly little beasts. Uh, I mean, they've got torpedoes and they've got uh, coil guns, just like you do, the long range ones. And they have particle beams. 
They are just basically just little uh, ship destroyers. They are gnarly little things to, to come across. Uh, they only have expert pilots flying them too, so that's, uh, that's a real kind of nightmare to deal with. Um, the big thing is if they're looking, if they're out looking, trying to stop somebody, those uh, fighters are probably going to be escorting uh, an Infernix Interdictus, which is a cruiser. Uh, essentially, it is a gargantuan monster ship. Uh, it even has a speed of eight, so it is not actually all that slow. But you're talking, uh, you know, 280 shields. Um, their their cannons can basically their forward cannon a super x laser could basically annihilate your ship with a single hit uh those things are just uh absolutely uh gnarly um and then beyond that if they were planning for war then they would probably be looking at a uh like a battleship something like that you're you're guessing that's probably not battleship area but they if the hell knights are in the system they're probably operating uh, with an interdictus, which is going to be more their, um, you know, their their base of operations for stop and frisk, let's say, like galactic stop and frisk, and they're going to be using a bunch of their burning nail fighters uh, to support it. So overall, so basically, if they find us, we can't outrun them. Uh, th yeah, if if they find you, they would essentially be the, the the same. Their fighters would be the same speed as you, but just way, uh, way heavier. Uh, uh, way heavier armed, like. Well, it doesn't do us any good to win a race if we die on the way. <laughs> so, um, no, knowing so that, we have three options: go around them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he made it. The reason why I originally said that is because he made it sound like if we piloted well, it wouldn't even cost us a minute. You know. Yeah, and that's the thing. He made it sound like if we piloted well, it wouldn't even cost us a minute. You know. Yeah, it's essentially if you it it comes down to a piloting check. Uh, what I what I do is I I set a a DC for for no uh, no loss, and then every every five you get under that, you're gonna just lose a couple of minutes. Or every every one you get under that, I guess would be like a minute lost. So um, you you essentially get that uh, to to go around them. If you if you try so, to go through, you can you can do silent running, but you are dealing with uh, you know if if they are in the way now the. The actual scanners are not, um, they just got, like, the fighters have basic short-range sensors. They're not, uh, they're not all that, um, that powerful, but the interdictus, if you pass that, it's got advanced, uh, long, or advanced mid-range sensors. So it's basically going to be really, really good at scanning your ship down. So you can try the silent running, or you could try the blockade blast through. Uh, you might be able to to get that extra out, um, but going around, I think, sounds like it's going to be what we have to do. Yeah, around would probably be the safest bet, but it's not going to be All the right. fastest. That's okay. I think we have to make sure we survive. <laughs> yeah, I still think we're forced into that option. All right. Well, you can uh, roll a piloting check and. Anybody that wants to, to roll an assist on it, Captain gives you a plus two. Gustav, are you going to roll an assist on that? Sorry, changing menus. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe Cal uh, Cal or or Doctor could could help us uh, with a computer check to find uh, to find an alternate route that is efficient. Sure. Uh, Dr. Gray could go ahead and make a computer check, and Cal can probably boost the engines a little bit. I mean, if you guys are willing to go out of the way, you could probably burn a little bit hotter. I could always blast some asteroids to give us some, like, cover. Yeah, yeah I mean... Uh, the, no, I mean... Blast, blast an asteroid out of the way to, uh, to, you know, make a little bit better path. Technically, technically, the silent running is always an option because I mean I, I don't know how you how you see that in Starfinder, but basically once once the ship gets on 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 its course, it'll it, it can shut off engines and not lose any any speed and just use gravity or microgravity of the asteroids to just fly by. Yep, you could you could accelerate up to a a, a certain speed. Uh, the only problem is if you go silent, then 
Uh, it might be a real, like, so essentially if you're doing silent running in a place that wasn't full of all sorts of little asteroids flying all yeah. over the place, it, it'd probably work really well. The, the problem is there's not a ton of navigation data and your scanners only go out so far. So you'd have yeah. to keep engines on for all sorts of little adjustments. So you'd be able to do somewhat of a silent whatever Whatevering running. thrusters. Yeah, I could I could use maneuvering thrusters for that instead yep. of like full full uh full ahead speed. Yep. So uh so Dr. Gray, you're able to go ahead and uh add a little bit of extra assist with using some navigation. You're able to suggest a, a route that uh, might save you a little bit of time and might be relatively clear of debris because debris is a really big concern here. Uh, so you can go ahead and add another plus two. And Cal, uh, he has uh, tweaked the engines, so we can go ahead and add another plus two. Um, and then we can say if, if Tybin can basically keep an eye out for uh, small asteroids and clear them out of your way, uh, just kind of looking ahead, uh, go ahead and roll, roll an attack roll right. for assist. So we have so we have uh, plus two from uh, from Captain. Basically, a plus two from everybody except for Tybin. And once he gets a roll on One, there, two, we can we can see if he. So that's a plus nine. Plus Hold on a second. Let let Tybin get his roll in. There you go. Yep. So he has he has basically a ready to attack roll. If there's any asteroids in the way, he can clear them out. So nice. go ahead, give yourself a plus eleven to your roll. Woo. And now I screw it all up. And roll the one. <laughs> Wait, yes, I can do that. He, he already rolled the one. It's He's due for a 20 now. <laughs> he's rolled a couple ones. There you go. Nice. So, with the help of the whole crew working like a well-oiled machine, you have taken a route completely around where you would normally go and you calculate that it is probably you probably only lost about 40 seconds off of what you would have taken uh you know by basically calculating out the the you know the the orbit of all these things moving around and all the microgravity concerned and everything else you guys have probably lost a minute or less uh to what you would have taken for the direct route so very very nice work team uh, it's a, a 39 i set the dc to 40 and so you know missing it by one you basically take about a minute off so awesome so yeah you guys uh end up cycling uh you know burning through there uh engines hot so not cold uh you're able to actually get a visual uh far off in the distance which would have been the direct route on that interdictus uh, and so apparently denegan kind of notified them and they were on their way out to the frigate so you guys ended up like essentially if you the more direct route you would have been basically going right at them as they were coming into you uh you guys ended up you know just curving around them getting nicely out of the way <clears throat> and make your way over to uh nisus so Nisus, let me see if I can find a picture of Nisus. I don't know if they've got one here. Um, they do not seem to have a picture of Nisus. <clears throat> so Nisus is a... Uh, what's the best way of explaining this? It's basically like a gigantic um, a gigantic ice sphere. And think about a planet, but the outside is entirely ice. And on the inside, you have mountain ranges of ice coming off and in. And a, a essentially a black void of water inside the planet. And then you have these domed cities. Uh, and let me... I can just do it this way. Let me just grab a quick screenshot of it so I can share that. So. <clears throat> and I will send this over to you guys. I'm sorry, I don't have it all, all ready for you. Uh, That's was, all right. I wasn't thinking about getting these things uh, ready to show you guys. I, I kind of thought they would have a picture of it in there, but 
apparently they don't. Um, so yeah, it's basically there's there's these giant bubble cities. So think about uh, almost like uh, you know you, you had the city that Jar Jar was from in Star Wars, where they've got this like bubble under the water, except that mm -hmm. the water is all on the inside of the planet and the bubbles are on the outside. So. Uh, and I will show this to you here. Uh, there we go. I think I can share that. Yeah, you can you can upload it to Fantasy Grounds and and share it with everyone. Um, there we go. There we go. So, yeah, I just I saved it as a a PNG and I wasn't really thinking about it. So there's Nisus. Uh, so yeah, uh, essentially, uh, Vando, which is that that top sphere. There's an outpost actually on the surface. Uh, it's kind of like an off-the-grid, uh, not-really-talked-about outpost. And that is the location <clears throat> that you're supposed to go to and deliver this stuff. So at this point, you're estimating that, you know, you might be... You might be 15 minutes behind uh, Dunagan, but he's also got a faster ship. So... You're not really all that far behind. Uh, so as you're as you're coming up to the planet, uh, in that in that time frame uh, that you're coming up to the planet, is there any preparations you guys want to do before landing at this outpost? So you have the coordinates for it. It's not something that's like they don't have a landing beacon or anything like that where you're supposed to, uh, you know, you're supposed to like automatically plug it in to find it. It's kind of like you know you've got to do some coordination on the on your computer scan the surface and and find certain landmarks to find this unmarked unlit uh essentially little um uh bunker where you're supposed to drop this stuff off uh is there any preparations you guys want to do before you get there i'd say um i would i'd say i'd say cap uh cap uh, talk to them uh to get to get ready for us and um uh... And uh, Cal and and Doctor could uh, could help with uh, scanning uh, scanning for the uh, location where to land, and plotting the course. Okay. So yeah, you guys can look sure. for a. Uh, you guys can go ahead and and make a computers check, Doctor Gray, for scanners to see if you can find a good flat landing spot near that. That's that's good enough. Uh, so you're able to to basically point out uh, a nice spot. That's just about the size of your ship. Um, you can land there with a with a little piloting check. Uh, it won't be all that difficult. We'll say like a, a DC 15 if you want to try to land right on it as basically about as efficiently as you can. Yep. Sure. Yeah. And Gustav gives you a, a plus two in his assist. He's basically right. watching. He's watching the landing cameras for you, so he can kind of call out. Okay, uh, let's roll. Um, so go ahead and give yourself a plus well, three on it. Yep, yep. There you go. Twenty-three. That's more than enough. So yeah, you go ahead and uh, pull it in, land it just about perfectly. Uh, as you guys get there, you don't see uh, Denegan. He's gone. So you don't know if he didn't show up or if, if he's already left. Uh, but as you get there, uh, you know, the place is essentially not, not lit up. There's no lights on the outside. Uh, but then you see a door swing open. Uh, and it's basically, you know, big uh, square 15 by 15 metal doors just open up. And as those doors uh, swing open, uh, you see uh, a, a couple of uh, humans come out and they they basically, you know, stand there essentially ready to receive 
uh, they're, uh, uh, they're, they, they've got a, a, a levitation pad just like you have, and they're ready to receive one and exchange it for the other. So. Is right. there is there anything that anyone wanted to do here other than make the exchange? Uh, Ask any questions? I do anything? Kind of. I don't know if it'd be perception or what. Just make sure this doesn't look like a trap. Um, you can roll perception if you want. Okay. Uh, as far as you see, you don't see anyone waiting to ambush you. You see guys, two guys in like a, a giant snowsuits, basically, you know, standing there in the cold, just pushing out this uh, this big levitating uh, cargo platform. And on it is uh, a bunch of uh, gray boxes, kind of similar to the one that your your uh, Vlaka friend gave you back on Eox, Garu. Uh, they've got these gray boxes on them, uh, similar to that. And that's essentially it. i just like to scan them to see what the new cargo is. Sure. Um, you can... Is anyone talking to them though? That's the only part I want to figure I, out. I'm gonna. I'd like yeah. to talk to them and sense motive as I talk to them. Just. I'll weird. go with the captain. Sure. What What are you actually asking them? All right. I'm, I'm not. I'm. I don't know. I'm not really asking them. I'm uh, just kind of trying to engage with them to see what they what they say. I mean, obviously, I know they're supposed to be picking up the stuff. Um, but uh, do you think that um, Dagen would have uh, talked with these same guys? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's. You know, two. It's two ask doors him. essentially. Yeah. So you could ask them if he's been here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll ask them. Okay. Uh, yeah. When when you ask him, uh, they say, yeah, he he left just a couple of minutes ago. I'm surprised you didn't see him when you're when you were coming in. Yeah. So yeah, they they go ahead and uh, get you everything. And yeah, you, as far as you can tell, these guys are just, they're workers. They're basically just told to, you know, receive and send and receive shipments. They're, they're warehouse workers. So. All right. Well, as okay. soon as we sit down, I would help unload this shit and get the new shit back on the ship. Yep. So you guys can basically just drop the, the eggs off there and concern yourselves with getting that, uh, that stuff onto the ship. Um, ghost one's ready to go. Uh, couple of you guys just give me initiative checks for for loading that stuff on the ship uh in in the meantime these guys look around at you uh and, and you notice something odd they're they're wearing all all white thick you know environment suits uh, they they look all kind of like they're camouflaged in uh you know because they're they're white and they blend in with the background the, these guys are also fairly heavily armed uh they they don't have uh they have large blasters at their side, essentially. Um, hey, Captain, just, ask them what they're, they're doing with the eggs, or why they're why they what like why the eggs here. Yeah, uh, I, I'd like to kind of get engage in some conversation, maybe. With okay. Them. Yeah, he he points at the 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 boxes. He says, "Don't you know?" Just points right at the boxes he's given you. We don't. <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, glass serpent scales. Scales? Uh, yeah, glass serpent scales. What do you do with them? Are they like uh, stealth suits? So, yeah, uh, essentially... Like the, for stealth suits? So think about uh, the uh, the glass serpents. They, they're they kind of like predator, uh, you know, where you can they're kind of like translucent. You can see through them. Uh, glass serpent scales have a very similar effect and you can make things out of them. So they're used for making high tech, uh, espionage armor and stuff. Uh, they're, they're very, very, uh, sought after, but glass serpents are essentially very dangerous, uh, creatures. So they're, they're kind of hard to get. So apparently what these guys are doing is they're, uh, releasing, uh, or they're, they're raising glass serpents, you know, in, a a clandestine to harvest their scales. Lo location to, clan to to harvest their scales, and apparently some of those glass serpents are getting out on occasion <laughs> and just filling the inside of this planet with uh, dangerous predators. So, yep, they're they're harvesting their scales, and so uh, the the scales are um, the scales themselves are not necessarily illegal, uh, but they are uh, highly valuable. 
So uh, this is a so uh, to to give you guys the background, the uh, the the reason that the captain basically picked this run is this was the run that he and his brother used to make, which made them their their fortune in their early days. This is essentially the run that the most profitable uh, diaspora relay run that they were able to figure out. They could get glass serpents, which are native to Eox, bring them to the people here who were illegally raising them and harvesting their scales, and then take the scales uh, over to Verses where they could turn a legitimate profit off of them. Uh, but uh, essentially it's um, uh, a dangerous cargo to be carrying just because it's it's so small, uh, easily looted by, let's say, pirates or something like that, and there's so many of them around here. Uh, and they're worth a fortune. So, but yeah, you're you're basically trading uh, babies for adult skins, more or less. Nice. Well, so, that's smart. Yeah. So you guys have a a, a ton, uh, a literal ton of glass serpent scales loaded onto your uh, onto your ship now. And nice. with that, you guys can go ahead and head off, uh, unless there's anything else you wanted to take care of. Or ask these guys. I don't think I'm good. No. Nope. Okay. So. So so he was just here, and which way did he head out? Uh, well, he would head out towards uh, towards Verses. So. Well, I'm just well, saying. Once I've been recording all the sensor data and everything, so like once we get back on our ship, like, you know, I, something f smells fishy about him coming and going. Okay. Well, he's. He left off heading towards Verses. Uh, I, 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 he went that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> right on the planetary scale, it's kind of hard yeah. to point. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 even more. It's it's a solar system wide scale. <laughs> but he went that way, and he points up in the sky. Yeah. Well, he, I meant like which quadrant he came in from, and which quadrant he left from would he, narrow down. You you like guys going over sensor you guys data. Did, you guys didn't catch him on sensors. He must have left a few minutes before you guys gotten within sensor range. Sen the sensors, yeah. these, so the, there's like very, very broad long range sensors that are good for finding like, um, you know, a astronomical things, uh, but your actual like able to scan and pinpoint things are more of like collision course distance, you know, m maybe a, a kilometer or two, depending on the. Yeah, the it's like board. double our. Double our scanner length is what we can get. Like, we know something's there. Yeah. And you guys have medium scanners, which is good, but medium scanners are still, you know, maybe a couple kilometers. So not not really that far. So if, if I mean, if he left, uh, you know, two yeah. minutes before you got there and he was hauling ass, he'd, he'd be out of there well before you guys were in scanner range. Now the the other alternative is the the hotter things burn, uh, usually the uh, the the easier they are to pick up. So, but yeah, you you guys didn't catch uh, you guys didn't catch a whiff of them when you got here. So. Because we just need to go faster then. Yep. Faster, faster, faster. So ghost one. No <laughs> ones. Yes, sir. You... you need to change your name to Ghost Twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ghost, ghost twenty. You ghost not twenty. <laughs> you have a very similar situation to uh, what we had before, where you can take an alternative route to Verses. This time, though, you do have a gravitational anomaly. You've been practicing this in the simulators. You know what this is but here's the here's the issue we have if you end up not making this roll and you go through have an axe vortex you would end up possibly losing the ship have an X vortex. Think of have an X vortex kind of like a. It's like a black hole. It's like a mini black hole. It's we just highly, make it to the other universe faster. Yeah, it's it, like nobody knows what's on the other side of it. It's just 
you know, and it's a essentially a high gravity dimensional vortex uh, in the diaspora, probably uh, essentially where the core of the planet would have been. Uh, there's, you know, murmurs that this was essentially the uh, the weapon used to actually destroy this planet, and this is the anomaly that was left over. The this is kind of like the 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 if you use the equivalent of a nuke, and you know you got the background radiation. The the weapon that was used to destroy this planet essentially left a mini black hole in its wake. Uh, it is highly highly dangerous. If Anything goes wrong, the ship can be lost. But, is this just going to be one roll or like a continued roll? So you've you've made this check. I say we do it. You've made this without check. without knowing. <laughs> you've made right. this check multiple times on a simulation. You know it provides a ridiculous benefit. To... Oh, well, wow. here's where the captain gets to use his uh, uh, what what was it? The plus five from the intimidating us. <laughs> plus so four. Making, yeah, that would the, definitely work. The check for doing. <laughs> you you've made this you've made this run in the simulator multiple times. Doing it yourself, you have about a fifty fifty success rate. With the crew helping the you, you know that it would be better. But you don't know how successful well, it's you, going to be. You don't really right. even know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you assume it would be better because you'd be able to have other people helping you out. Essentially, you've seen situations when you're running this through the simulator. You've seen situations. Asteroids in the way. As you navigate to move out of the way of the asteroid, it throws off your calculations. You get sucked into the hole. You know. Um, other things. You uh, you're you're trying to run a calculation. To, to adjust course, and as you're running that calculation to adjust course, uh, you lose track and you, you hit an asteroid. Damage a thruster, sucked into the black hole. There's There's been lots of things that have gone on. If you have somebody else that can run calculations for you, if you have somebody else that can, uh, you know, essentially, uh, you know... Blast the asteroids out. Yeah, blast the asteroids out of the way. If you have somebody else that's able to, you know, apply extra thruster to kind of get you out, you might be able to make it through more successfully. Right now, you're running about a 50-50 on simulation. So you got you got three what, people. What what did the what did the simulation numbers change to the times that I assisted him? Well, you didn't you didn't. Right, you guys are fishing for DM information. Well, do I, I said there were I said there were times before where when he was running the simulations, I was doing them with him. Did that no, change I, the fifty percent? You you were uh, essentially when you're running the simulations, um, you know you're you're basically in there looking at it. Uh, as far as what it takes, though, you you guys didn't have a full crew, so you're you're kind of in there looking at it and making suggestions. You're basically assisting him with piloting roles. He was still about a fifty fifty. He he did better right. the the times, but it, you guys have run through these simulations lots of times. It's it's a it's a crapshoot. Best right. chance fifty percent. So because we have a little bit of time leading up, can I take twenty on intimidate? <laughs> <laughs> take twenty on intimidate. What what you can do is you guys are gonna have to make if you guys take you guys so here's here's the I'll lay out the mechanics for you guys. Denegan's ahead. He's got a faster ship. You guys can do kind of what you did where you guys all try to jump on and give a boost to his his roll. You roll and intimidate. Roll everything, and you guys can leave it up to a single roll of uh, a piloting check. And if you end up uh, beating Denegan's adjusted DC, you guys get there ahead of him. If you don't, then you guys get there behind him. If you guys take this route, each successive roll that you guys make uh, ends up giving you a greater DC. But his DC, so basically you're giving yourselves a bigger bonus to your success. But if he rolls too low on the piloting check, the ship can be damaged or destroyed. So there is a risk. Still here. sounds it's, like more fun. It, it is more fun, yeah. but it's more dangerous. So basically, do you risk giving yourselves a bigger bonus, but having a way bigger fail rate, uh, or you know, do you go ahead and go? Well, we can, you know, we can try to leverage it out with this. 
what would the captain do? Well, we're going to lose the ship if we don't win. So Right. I mean, there's no point in... <laughs> well, go, the old captain was a gambling man. Go big or go home, I guess. Yeah, if you're going to get stuck, man, get stuck big. If you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. <laughs> no doubt. There you go. All right. So um, if anyone is watching the stream, see you in the next episode in Delta Quadrant. <laughs> There you go. All right, so let's let's do this. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, if you guys are going to take that route, we're going to need some checks. Dr. Gray, you're going to have to be running scanners and looking for anything that might, uh, any like microgravitational fluctuations, any uh, items that might be getting in your way. Perfect. Done. Okay, done. Um, as you're as you're going through doing that, Cal, you're going to need to be boosting engines so that he he can get you know maximum thrust and maximum power out of that. Done, perfect. Uh, next is asteroids. There's the Doctor Gray has uh, encountered a, a few asteroids that were in the way. So Tyvin, let's go ahead and make a attack roll on those, blasting them out of the way. <laughs> Good. Oh, that's piloting. Oh. Not a, not piloting is targeting thing, so good enough. Oh, hopefully you can use you can use piloting for uh, for gun attacks on a the ship. That's what you use. Yeah, that's oh, what you use, yeah. okay. I thought it was an attack roll. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. So yeah, you you're no, using you can use ranks, not your total, but yeah. Yeah, I th I thought for the the ship weapons you could use actual you could use actual attack uh attack proficiency bonus and everything. I think you can Yes, you but to... so some of the classes don't get a plus one at first level. Gotcha. So if you have a rank in piloting you can use your ranks instead of your base attack bonus. Okay. Alright. So uh so go ahead and alright so you got that so that's good. Um let's see. It would be three less because you wouldn't get proficiency with it just as ranks, but, uh, right Gustav, right. you're, you're basically kind of being the intermediate and you're basically taking the information that these guys are getting and condensing it into a form that's going to assist ghost one. So go ahead and give us a piloting assist role. Oh, <laughs> a nat one, but it's still a 10. So um, that's your that's your DC to hit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, not have it go against you because you even though you got a one, you got the DC, but it's not gonna actually give a bonus. So uh, all right, so we've got uh, we've got our first set of bonuses. Ghost one, roll your first piloting check. This is your piloting check on the approach to. Now do I get to intimidate? Uh, you want to you, you can make a diplomacy, but if you want to do intimidate, I would save the intimidate for the final. There's going to be for the next round. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's gonna be, so All there's right, going to be. I'll do the diplomacy gonna, now. Yep. Go ahead and roll your diplomacy. There's going to be three stages essentially. Oh, really nice. Yeah. You got a thirty-one. So you give them another another plus. Okay. So ghost one, go ahead and make your. This is the approach. So you got the approach. You got the sling. Uh, the sling stage. And then we're going to basically rock it off uh, on the exit. So this is the approach, making sure you're landing it fine. All right. So what's the bonus for it? Um, uh, you're you're going to make a, we're not, we're going to basically save all the bonuses that everyone's given you and we're going to apply them at the end. So we're going to make a big, a big one. So this is just a, a regular approach. You're going to just try to make your <laughs> un, unassisted. No, just, just my, the okay. The, the plus one from the ship. That's it. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> okay good <laughs> all, all for the approach the approach all you needed was a 10 so okay you you everyone managed to get it in there so we we've got the the bonuses uh from everyone kind of uh, stacking up here as you make the approach it's not the it's not the exact path that you would have taken uh, because, you know, you've kind of got all these people making all these different adjustments and it's hard to keep track of all of it. Gustav is trying to help you and he's barely able to keep up with all of the, uh, all of the 
uh, the, the information that he's receiving. He's trying to digest it and give it to you in the way that's going to be most effective. And he's doing a decent job at it, but it's just a, really hard to keep up with. So you manage to get into the slingshot position where you're, you're basically coming around the vortex and you didn't go into it. You're just surfing that gravitational wave right on the outside of it. So, uh, oh, he just pointed something out. There we go. That should be, sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the cam was, was, um, out since, yep. since the break. Put, put my, okay. take my, put my picture back on. So, uh, essentially you're just surfing that, that gravitational wave right on the edge of it. Uh, you know, just kind of barely hanging on. So, uh, this is for all the marbles. Let's start with Dr. Gray. Dr. Gray, you're fascinated by this incredible gravitational anomaly and you execute a beautiful, uh, you, you see this beautiful, like the, the, the math just comes alive in your head as you're, as you're calculating things out. You're like, I can see the wave and I can basically detect this pattern and you end up calculating out this beautiful trajectory that should rocket you right out. Okay. Next is Cal. Cal, you've, you've got to get the final boost to those engines. The engines are as hot as they've ever been. The ship is just shaking. You are holding everything together, just roaring with power. Tybin, clearing out these asteroids that are inside the uh, the pathway. Wrong day. It's still good enough. We'll take hey, it. But it would have been a 20. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll still take it. Gustav is able to take all the information from everybody and feel it all, feed it over to Ghost One. Ghost One. Here's what I want you to do. Plus, Not fuck up. Plus two, plus four, plus six, plus eight, uh, plus ten, plus twelve, plus fourteen, plus sixteen. Captain, roll your intimidate. Captain, does wh what's the DC on the intimidate on that? Oh, intimidate is do, 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 do. where'd that go? On your and I don't know what the DC is on the intimidation it's check. It's demand. It's not called intimidate. That's yeah, why. Yeah, uh, the DC demand. DC fifteen plus two times your starship's tier. Uh that is a nineteen. So unfortunately, the intimidate does not work. Unless somebody has some idea of what the, if there was some bonus that the captain had that he was missing. Doesn't he usually get a uh, D6 on that also, or no? Was that just the other? No, no that was, it's it not for, a specialty. Yep, he has it for bluff and sense motive. So, no, uh, so unfortunately, so Ghost One, you have a grand total of a plus 17. So the captain is like, all our lives are counting on this. And while he does not give you a, a significant intimidation effect, we will say that he can give you still the inspiration, inspirational effect from uh, his, his normal diplomacy check because he had so much heart in it that he couldn't even really intimidate you on it. You guys all know that your lives are on, the, on it. We'll give you a plus 19 to your roll. All so, right. So make and a piloting as... make a piloting check plus nineteen, and then I am going to make Denegan's piloting check here. All right. So as as Captain says, all our lives depend on it. I, I just I just hang on to the throttle and and go. I know. <laughs> and here comes the roll, guys. Ghost twenty. <laughs> What? Hold on, hold on. I have not made my roll yet, so hold on a second. Yeah, but he's gonna get like a twenty. No. Is this the part where you throw your dice away? No, no. Literally, Denagans. So your DC, your DC. Remember, it's his cumulative. Your DC for making it through this successfully was a 30. You guys have a plus 30. So 
even though you did not make, uh, even though you got a natural one, your plus 30 means that you would have still succeeded even on natural one. So it's no critical fumble. It's just what it is. So you guys make it and you get your roll. You got a 31. Denegan rolled a two. He did not have a plus 30. <laughs> he had a plus 10. So what you guys were looking at was it was you, whatever you guys could muster with your assistance on a plus 10 for Denegan versus yours. So you guys end up getting there, and uh, I had it. So it was 10 minutes for every one that you were ahead. Uh, even on a 31, uh, that still gives you guys, uh, what is that? That's 19, so 190 minutes. So you guys arrive uh, about three hours <laughs> before Denegan would even get there. So you guys end up getting to Verses, making it through the slingshot, going faster than you think you could ever travel, uh, you know, without using, you know, uh, without using uh, any sort of exotic technology. As far as rocket engines and everything go, like regular impulse engines, you guys are just screaming past. And you guys end up making it to Verses uh, in record time. What should have been a a 48-hour trip, uh, you guys are able to, to make in uh, about a day and a half. Just crazy, crazy, crazy fast. So you, you've easily shaved uh, off of whatever you would have thought was possible. You guys have easily shaved about, uh, you know, 12 hours off of it. So even with the, the high speed ships and the piling and everything, you guys did an amazing job uh, and you are at Verses. So this is where we're at. Uh, you guys are essentially at the planet, uh, ready to touch down. And uh, when you come in to ask if Denegan has arrived yet, you hear that no, he has not alive, arrived. <laughs> yeah, ghost, ghost, nat one. <laughs> luckily though, luckily though, it's it's a, an entire crew effort, and ghost one, even on a one, is still way more skilled than most people. Yep. Are. <laughs> so. <laughs> You well, that if, was that was an ass clenching moment. Literally, right. I mean, and I, we get to Versys and don't even know. I, so, I, I, yeah, I'm 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 letting you guys know, if one of you had failed your other checks, and you know, if the captain did not just get that little bit of inspiration out at the end, he actually made his check. By the way, what the for intimidate? Yeah. Oh, the Aratus. The Aratus not two times starship tier. It's uh, it's just fifteen plus one and a half, so it's fourteen. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So yeah. So basically, if it 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 all came down to if anyone had really missed out on uh, you know another role, you guys would have literally just. Hey, that was Starfinder. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the, that's that's the end of it. But you guys end up getting there. Uh, you get to Verses. Uh, it's the River of Returning Joys, which is the the River of Returning Joys is essentially this big trade caravan that uh, you know it's basically like a big trade caravan that goes around the planet. And as you guys get there, you come into the the landing zone. Denegan has not been seen. Uh, you're not overly surprised uh, because, you know, you didn't scan him anywhere along that anomaly and you guys were on sensors the entire time. He was not going that way. And that is a very dangerous path. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we've, we've got a couple minutes here. Let's go ahead and just finish this up. So as you guys land on Verses and as you get there, uh, you are greeted by uh, some of your friends from Absalon Station. So uh, you've got uh, you've got Perry, uh, who is there, and Zai are both there waiting to greet you. Uh, super excited. You're able to drop off your cargo at the trade caravans. You 
essentially turn in the scales and as you turn in the scales uh, everyone is all excited you get a call on comms uh, it's, it's essentially uh, another um, uh, it's another uh, uh, I'm I'm missing it up is here. the contact it? for our other package yeah it's it's the um, it's basically Garu's Garu's handle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the other. The Vlakas. I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember the race. The the Vlakas. It's Garu's handler. Uh, another Vlaka kind of calms you and says, "Hey, I'm I'm here to take that package off your hands." Uh, and you know he's he's able to do that. They're they're taking those uh, glass serpent scales off. And Perry says, "You know, Denegan will find out in a couple of hours that he has not only lost the ship." But da, 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 da. it's Let a tattoo. Me, he gets a tattoo, which I have a picture of for you guys. So hey, if, if, stamp. You, if you give me just a moment, I will uh, I will pull this up for you. So while while we're talking there, uh, if you guys want to uh, figure out uh, any of anything that you particularly want to say or do or whatever this is going to be a a good good little surprise um i am just pulling this up here I so what so yeah, we still ahead. get paid for this run on top of everything else right you you get paid yeah. you, get to, you get the profit off of it you get the ship uh, so here, I'll I'll tell you what you're getting while I'm looking this up. So um, you get your ship. Uh, your portion of the sale of the gra glass serpent scales is five thousand credits. You get the thousand credits for your uh, your other package, other illicit package, <laughs> which you didn't have any problems with uh, coming in. Uh, you you came in so hot and fast that it was. You know, basically, you ended up blasting past any blockade that would have been there. Um, so yeah, there is that. Give me. I'm not. This isn't coming up for me. Give me one second here. It's all right. I wish we could have. Wish. Wish we'd have had time. We kind of split past the betting on ourselves and. Yeah, yeah. We had other other stuff to worry about at that moment. Yeah, I'm just wondering what kind of tattoo he will get. Like, um, I don't know, uh, maybe across his forehead, asshole. It is. It is a tramp stamp. He has to get this this tramp stamped on his lower back. And I will show it to you. I am God. Just fucked. I'm putting it. I've got the picture. I'm just putting it into the campaign. So, <laughs> so there we go. So this is titled "In Memory of Captain Vito." Vito is here. <laughs> so here you go. There is your tramp stamp, uh, Cap nice. Captain Captain Danny Vito. That is <laughs> that is your lovely captain. Oh, nice. And always, Danny's bitch is the tramp stamp. And so uh, Denegan uh, needs to get that tattooed on his lower back. He has lost the ship. And like I said, you guys got the 5,000 credits. So let's let's distribute this. Uh, we've got this here. So I'm going to the, the inventory here. So we've got an extra 6,000 credits total. So it's, sorry, 6,000, whoops, 6,002, because there's two on there. All right, so let's distribute that to everybody. There is everyone's our bonus share. from Zoe. Did we already get our bonus yep. from Zoe? He he sent you two thousand credits in the the beginning oh, of the game. Okay, that was yep. the two thousand. Yep, that was yep. the the two thousand. Uh, essentially, the way it, the way it worked out is uh, you you could get a you could get a scale from zero uh, to three basically. Uh, every every time you guys did something that really boosted the ratings. Uh, you guys got one. You got one for basically annihilating everybody, killing everybody. I mean, you didn't kill all the people, but you basically, you know, 
either just completely killed them or dominated everyone. So you got one for that. You also got one for the time that you guys said, uh, hey, let's go ahead and uh, leave it to the audience vote. Everyone went wild over that. So they got, he's got you guys a couple of uh, different ones. So you guys end up getting the bonuses from that. Uh, speaking of Zoe, by the way, uh, he ends up giving you a calm and say, hey, I, uh, I heard about your, uh, your record-breaking run. That's great. Uh, I've got another run for you. This, uh, this is called the Bizzing Run. And uh, if you guys are ready, I'm about to televise a, a race of it. So uh, re- get a hold of me, and I'll let you. I'll let you guys get automatic entry into the the race. I'll, I'll even waive the the uh, the the check-in fee. So congratulations and good luck. So uh, just a question for him, real quick, mm-hmm. before Ooh. he hangs up. No, that, um, Zoe, Zoe sent you a Zoe. message. He Zoe doesn't. Okay. Zoe doesn't talk to anybody. He sends people messages. So. Well, then I want to send him a message if he'd be interested in maybe televising, not televising, but like if he'd be interested on. Oh, um, I know what you're video. about to say. I'm going to edit the video together from our run. Oh, I thought that you wanted to to televise. Um, well, that too. Uh, Danegan, Danegan getting the tattoo. Well, that's going to be part of the video. But I'm saying, like, I, I took video of all the rest of it, minus I'm probably going to edit out the parts where anything illegal is mentioned. But all the rest of the run and the exchange of cargo and everything else, I was videoing the whole thing. So I could probably edit something together there, including the tattoo at the end, and it might make a great little special for him. Ah, so kind of like a, like a bonus content. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. Yeah. See if I could get a little bit of sure. distribution rights off the whole thing. Sure. You guys, you guys can, uh, you can throw together some bonus content, and we can go ahead and take care of that next game, uh, and and kind of toss that as uh, as something you'd like to offer him an exclusive on, where he can maybe kind of show that either as a, a follow up to your win on his game or as an intro to you guys going into the race if you want to do that. Um. Yeah, so that's that's essentially it. That was that's the the Let's Learn Starfinder intro. Everything past this is the crew who has fully earned uh, their lead foot. Uh, you guys have money. Oh, and I I get to give you your experience too. Hold on a second here. So nice. We are going to add the um, experience here. I'm telling you, uh, if we do this, um, this picture that we're looking at is gonna oh. is gonna go viral across <laughs> the galaxy. <laughs> it's assuming he even holds up his his end of the bargain. And then, uh, okay, so. We're awarding experience here. This is not exciting stuff, but we will do that. So we're awarding experience for completing the session successfully. Uh, we're awarding experience for winning the lead foot successfully. We're also awarding bonus experience for uh, getting using the hawk. Uh, sorry, they have an X vortex. They have an X vortex. Uh, so Perry looks at you guys and said, you know, have an X vortex, right? Yep. Uh, right. He's, he said, yeah, that was, that was captain's favorite. He used to use it all the time. And Denegan hated it because Denegan said that they were, they didn't need it and they could still win without it. And they were risking all of it and they could kill themselves over nothing. And, that was the big split between them that ended up causing them to eventually rift. And sometimes it worked out great, and sometimes it didn't. And there's uh, there's even some one instance of the captain doing the vortex where it didn't work out. But uh, I guess in the end it did. He definitely lost the race, but that's a story for a different day. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of funny that the thing that split them up was the thing that, uh, ended up, you know, getting you guys the win on the ship. The, the captain's smiling on you right now. I know it. So the, uh, that, 
So successfully navigating Havanax Vortex is worth bonus experience too. So all together, let's award that. Hey, we're third level. Hey. 2,000 experience right? for having X Vortex, 6,000 experience for winning the lead foot, and 300 experience for the session. Everyone should be at uh, 3,300 for their next 46. Mm -hmm. let me, uh, so let me make sure that's on there. Yep, uh, that I pushes see. us 46 past the uh, past third level threshold. That is exactly it. So. There you go. You guys actually get to level up again. So there's that. Let me see who else. Captain, I'm going to go ahead and enter your next level in. Experience needed. 3,300. And then uh, Gustav, your experience needed. 3,300. So yeah, everyone, congratulations. You've won a ship. You've leveled up. You've got a bunch of cash. You're on a major planet where you can spend that cash doing what you want to do. and uh, on the next game, we will get to go over all the different little things that you've uh, done. Uh, technically, I believe, let me look at the inventory. Uh, technically, you guys even have enough cash if you pulled it together to uh, to pay off your debts. Nah. But you've got, <laughs> you've got months to do that. So, but yeah. Yeah, congratulations, everybody. That was uh, that's a fun run. Uh, so as a reminder, next week we're not going to stream. So uh, what I might end up doing is just I'll leave the game up for you guys to level yourselves up. I'll probably leave it up that weekend too. Uh, you know, just put it up so you guys can jump in and level up a little bit more research. Um, but we're we're not going to stream or or do an official game. But if you guys want to jump on and and chat or look at anything, you can you can still do that. Um, but yeah, and then we will return on uh, the 29th for our first one where you guys can basically get to take all the, the little strings I've tossed you of all these different offers. So you have the, again, the offer from Zoe, um, which is the uh, Bizzing Run. You guys have, uh, you know, several people that you've made very happy. You've made Perry very happy. Uh, you've, you've worked with Garu. You've got the Plague Rats. Um, you've got a, a lot of people here that, uh, that are, are basically really excited and, uh, have, have left it open. Plus you guys have a full ship and a bunch of money. So if you wanted to buy some cargo and trade that or go explore or do what you want to do, you sky's the limit. Uh, so we can cover that in two weeks. So congratulations, everybody. It's been, uh, been a great game. Thank you. Yes, thank fun. you. Yeah. So thank you all. Sweet. Yes, thanks, everyone. All right. Yeah. Congratulations, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream here. So uh, signing off. Thank you.